go. Okay, I'll do it. It's your it's your mistake, but okay. <laughs> well, five well, seconds we, in. We, we can always edit it. Well, let's see what Joe does, and if it's shit, then I will take over. <laughs> no, this is the oh, intro. We're going. We're rolling. We're wasting tape here, guys. Okay. <laughs> it's digital, Hello. though. <laughs> ah. Or oh. waffles, whichever you prefer. Oh, what a fucking intro. <laughs> It's the Film Dudes Podcast with Stuart, Landon, and Joe. Uh, well, Landon, why don't we listen to your troubles for the first half of this podcast? <laughs> okay, so uh, spring break was this week from my master's program. It was more like an extended weekend. Uh, Tuesday was, uh, me and Lizzie's ninth anniversary. Ooh. And of course, being in Kansas, super windy. Spring, super windy. Super windy. Hiya. Wanted to go out by Strong City to check out the, the tall grass plains. You know, Strong City's out there by Emporia, mm. which is I-35 North, Emporia, Topeka. Look it on a map. <laughs> Not a lot out there. No. There there was wind. <laughs> My cursed wind. And, yeah, I, I, it would have been an ideal trip. It would have been fun if it wasn't for that goddamn wind. And uh. Uh, we went down to Cottonwood Falls. We went out there by, like, Chase Lake State Park. That was fun. But I mean, just fighting the wind, getting b- there and back on the interstate, it was, it was kind of stressful, especially with two kids. And then after that, uh, we scheduled to work on our, uh, what I I consider it like a, oh, what is that master's program thing? It's not your thesis; it's your dissertation. Dissertation. I love, how, kind of I love how I know that, and I refuse to go to grad school. <laughs> yeah, so so anyways, this is kind of like a dissertation where we have to present a project to uh, the KCU Science Symposium. And I feel like I've kind of hit like a management point where it's like I'm trying to mm-hmm. gather everybody and everything's being done on my computer. We're, you know, FaceTime, well, Zooming, and like going through our data for this analysis that we're doing and that we're going to present. And, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm busy tonight. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I can't do this. And it's just like, great. Well, we're still holding it. I'm, like, the only person who's consecutively shown up to every single meeting and, like, tried to be productive about it. But, yeah, it's just, it's nuts. Well, you know there is that old story of uh, a bunch of people go into a coffee house and their super rich friend pays for it every single time. And then one day the super rich friend stops showing up and all the other people are like, well shit, who's going to pay for this? Or something like that. That's a good analogy that I've always heard. I think it applies to this situation, but also on a joking yeah. level, welcome to my world trying to play on this shit show every week. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, always in undergrad, there's always the one who doesn't do anything, who yeah. just kind of skates on the curtails, and then there's somebody who's like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm showing up to everything, but I'm not really doing anything, and then there's the person who does all the work, and then there's always the person who, I, I, I'm, like, trying to avoid that. I'm trying to make everybody contribute equally to this, mm-hmm. but I don't know. But luckily, I mean, our thing, our project was due tonight to present to our professor, who's actually the head of the board of the symposium. And he was going to, you know, give us final touches before we submit it on Monday. That way we could work on it over the weekend. But they've extended that. So we put in a lot of grunt work. Yeah. Well... The majority of us has put in a grunt work like Monday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And well, no, not even Wednesday. I We did have a meeting on Wednesday, but it was a short meeting. It was just kind of 
this is what we're doing. Okay, let's talk about, you know, let, let's start planning. But at this point, we have our data sets ready. And we're like at the point where, where we just need to clean up a few things and what we what we got from it. So, and, and, but it's not due until the 26th now. So <laughs> that seems to always happen as well on major yeah. projects. Yeah. So I feel like we, I mean, I, each group member busted their ass in their own way, but I can only bitch about myself. And I busted my ass for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, trying to, you know, work around schedules and try to make time in order to do this thing. And now it's like, oh, this isn't even due. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. God damn it. Well, what you could do. Um... I've never done this, but I've always been tempted to, is to, like, fuck something up to where it sets the group back to, like, 80% completion, and it forces you to, like, relook at things. Yeah, I've thought about that, but I mean, the, the whole thing with this program is, is it's, you have to finish with a 3.0, or you don't graduate. And for a lot of these people, they're medical school career is like writing on the lines yeah and i mean i've i've received enough rejection letters now that i i'm only holding on to one school uh, and i'm kind of thinking that they're gonna say no to but also thinking about it it's like i'm 36 do i want to be doing my residency all the way up until i'm 40 that's usually what happens yeah, it's like, do I really want to do that? Or do I just want to use this master's and get, like, a decent paying job? You know, somewhere within six figures. And and just call it quits. Start working instead of taking out loans and, and yeah. like, trying to work towards more money in the future. Maybe I'm at that point where it's like, you know what? Maybe $128,000 a year is not that bad. It's better than what I'm making now. And I can start paying off my student loans. And with $128,000 a year, I'd actually still be able to like help my kids through college. So Hell yeah, dude. I mean, so I can I'm give you some investing advice as well. School. So yeah, that that's kind of where I'm sitting. And, and now that I've vented... <laughs> So like, everybody, let's talk, about, let's talk about movies. Everybody needs a healthy rant every now and then, and uh, yeah, I, I very much would like to talk about movies because um, I think that uh, Roman J. Israel Esquire uh, is what you need in your life. It is the um, turkey bacon maple donut of movies. You don't know what the <laughs> fuck it is. Until you actually see it and realize how big it is. And I assume it's amazing. Um, that's an analogy. If you've watched the film, you'll get it. Uh, <laughs> okay, but if you, if you, before you get into that, I want you to elaborate on w how does the turkey fit into this maple bacon donut? I don't know, but that's <laughs> in the movie. He's like, you know, there's a, there's a food truck down by the beach that sells turkey bacon maple donuts. And people just buy them and sit under the trees and eat them. I'm going to go have one someday. Or something like that. And then, yeah, it plays out and uh, he has a fucking donut and it's fucking huge. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've had a lot of maple bacon donuts, but I'm really fascinated about this turkey bit. And Well, it could be like turkey bacon, not like pork bacon. See what I'm saying? Oh, so it's... Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> it had like little bits on it so I, what the fuck did you just send you I, I don't know you mentioned sandwiches and that just made me think of last week <laughs> uh, but yeah um, yeah uh, Denzel Washington is Roman J. Israel Esquire the Esquire is not really explained it was kind of funny because somebody asked him, asked him what it means and he's like it's like, a little just above gentleman and just under knighthood. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a pretty good line. But, um, 
I almost want to write about it on my website. Um, and I, I try to reserve that for like very, very thinking man films, um, or thinking person films because it's 2021 and ooh, that's sexist. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of hearing that because you hear that all throughout the film. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it's funny because we have this podcast and we are three very white dudes. Well, Landon's got a nice tan depending on the time of year. But uh, the point is, <laughs> um, I think everyone should watch this movie. Law students should watch this movie. Um, activists should watch this movie, film students should watch this movie, and for film students, you should always watch the behind the scenes. I just committed a cardinal sin by uh, popping out the DVD and hitting record for this podcast, so I need to uh, yeah, go maybe. back and uh, watch the uh, behind the scenes stuff for this. Um, but uh, that's, that's like an unspoken rule, you know, you, you always got to go watch the uh, behind the scenes. I think so. Exactly. It's part of the movie. It's the package deal, you know? Um, but in terms of Denzel Washington's role, really great. Great role. It's about Roman J. Israel Esquire. You see him all throughout the film. Um, the ending. Have either of you guys actually seen it? No. no. Okay. Came out in 2017, but I'm not actually going to spoil anything because it, you could you could see it coming. But, um, it's interesting how they, how they did choose to end it. Um, it left me wanting more, that's for sure. Uh, but I think it ended in the way that it should have. Um, it could have ended with more, but it's, sh- it's implying what it would have ended up showing, um, Maybe they did, maybe it's in the deleted scenes that they they did have a full ending, but uh, one of the things throughout the film is uh, he's working on this huge, crazy court case that would essentially charge the entire judicial system against itself. Uh, And so, yeah. But uh, it was kind of funny, during one scene, he's... He's out of work, and uh, he's calling a bunch of places and getting rejected. I'm like, that is fucking me right now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, job hunting. That's fun. Um, But a brief sidetrack here is that I did apply to a position at KU, uh, the film department, as an administrative associate, and I'm kind of... I'm kind of terrified. I guess this is going to turn into a completely different uh, storyline here. Um, you know, movie reviews over. So uh, <laughs> the whole James Gunn incident, right? How he said something ages ago, and some fuckhead found it and brought it to the surface, and Disney was like, "Ah, you said a bad thing that really wasn't all." Did he say something about dead babies or something like that? Which was the actual thing that got him in trouble? I can't remember. Um, oh, shit. Oh, if I he had said something about, about dead, dead babies. babies, nobody would have cared. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I remember. Mean, it's terrible, but it's true. I, I don't remember what he said, but it was something along the lines of a dead baby joke or something, I think. And it... it uh, Great the, jokes. <laughs> what's yeah, worse than right. one dead baby? Ten dead babies. No. Uh, <laughs> Funnier uh, than a dead baby. A dead baby in a clown costume. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, but yeah. so I applied for the job, and then like two hours later, I I literally was having like a mental breakdown because it was like, oh shit, I've got this podcast. It's so unprofessional, yeah. and yeah. I, I was message. texting Joe so much that day. I literally was about to delete everything all these episodes gone every every social media platform i was just about to fucking scrub myself and then i was like you know what this needs to stay up yeah and i'm not trying to like pull a james gun and get away with it i hate calling it a james gun but it's it's what everyone recognizes now um and you know 
If I don't get the job because I've said something stupid about KU, well, okay, they do have a right to not give me the job. But at the same time, this is the best example I've, I've thought of here, is let's say that this podcast is our company. All right, let's say somehow we're successful enough to make money from this mess and we actually can live off of it. And somebody comes up and says, fuck you, fuck your company, I hate it. And if they just, period, that's it, yeah, I'm just going to laugh at them. It's like, what the fuck do you know? Now, if they were to come up to me and say, fuck your company, fuck you, I hate it because all you do is say fuck other companies... And that's mm-hmm. how you got to success. I'd be like, all right, you got a valid point there. You do have a valid point. Would yeah, you... There is some understanding and a little bit of empathy. And I would probably then actually offer that, that person a job and say, all right, you know, we've had years of success and we're clouded now. You have a vision to set us back on the right track. And at that point... That it's in the person's hands to either help us or to laugh at other to laugh at us and walk away, and it would be in everyone's best interest, I think, if that person accepted the job offer. Um, they would help us. They'd prove their point by helping us, and yeah. So I'm not actively saying FKU. Certainly not the film department. Absolutely not. I want to make that perfectly clear. I'm not trying to pad this for a job now, but I love the film department. It was a lot of fun. It, it opened my mind to a lot of different things. The couple of people that put their names at the bottom of major KU emails, on the other hand, one of them's a puppet, and the other one is the ringleader from the shadows i'm not gonna say their names because it's gonna be irrelevant in two to four years Good idea. then you padding your job opportunity <laughs> <laughs> yeah well maybe i don't know I, i'm just this this is just a big brain moment here um because y- you know i think i am qualified for the job I see things and and the job is to work with the two people who i don't want to say their names And I think I am the right person for the job because I see things that need to be changed. I see things that, you know, as a student, I may not have paid much attention to my freshman year, but I sure as shit paid attention to it my final year. And so, yeah, Joe, you you definitely had an opinion of this when we talked about KU shutting down the... um, Humanities Department. And maybe, yeah, you don't need a direct department... But, because everything's based off of the humanities, but at the same time, the poor bastards who earned a degree, who spent 20, 50, 70, hell, even a hundred thousand dollars for a fucking piece of paper that says, hey, this doesn't necessarily guarantee you a job, but it makes you look good, I guess, I don't fucking know, um, what the fuck is it worth then, when your whole department has just been dissolved? You know, people are out of work, maybe. Some people might have lost their jobs. And so, yeah, to a certain degree, KU, fix your shit. Because you're spending money on fucking buildings that shouldn't really have been built in the first place. You just need to take care of the other buildings. But yeah, anyway, that's my rant. (laughs) Yeah, I I loved how you messaged me because it's like, you're like I, I'm so I'm so worried that I'm gonna cost Joe and Landon their jobs. I'm like, dude, it's like you insulted one, maybe two people. I've insulted. <laughs> well, we Disney, did have the KU basketball team, the Chinese government, the British government, the IRA, <laughs> Stanley Kubrick. Uh, I know there's quite a few more actually. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think I've actually insulted anybody. <laughs> Landon, you just don't talk, period, like 80% of the episodes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't want to insult anybody, and I'm also trying to be like be better in BPC. Yeah. I mean, if I just ranted and raved like I wanted to, I'd sound like I'm like 90 years old living out in the <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. Or you could be Ricky Gervais and just call everybody a bunch of right? 
Yeah, but <laughs> but at the same time, I do see like you trying to make a good example and a good image of yourself. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's like you there's context there that they need to read into. That exactly. Need to, it's but, like if you say I, something sucks, there's a viable reason of why you think that sucks. And it's either because of the fact that they did something wrong to you or, you know, maybe KU did not give you a proper enough education in order to, like, validate a certain opinion or something like that. I mean, I I can honestly say, screw KU, it's a business, it's a sham, it, it's two letters at the end of my name, which are <laughs> B and A instead of B and S, but I right now I'm working on my M and S, and guess what? It's still a business. Well, yeah, that's the joke. It's Stupid. bullshit, more shit, piled higher and deeper, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. and it doesn't matter if they cancel that department. You still have your accreditation because you got that when they were accredited. Exactly. So, so it's not hurting anybody if they close that department. I feel sorry for the people who are like in the middle of that degree. Yeah, that's, but see that that too. I didn't even that, factor that in. UKU, that's a big fuck you. You're failing your students. You are doing, you know, horrible things with your student body because some people were relying on that degree, and now they have to find something else. And maybe they're not going to thrive as much as they were in the humanities department. I hope you're willing to compensate them for that. Yeah, for sure. I, I hadn't even factored that in. But not just but KU here. That's a valid argument is, is, you know, not the people who've already graduated. Guess what? They got the initials. They got the degree. It was accredited. It counts. They're yeah. fine. The yeah. people who are, like, almost done with it, what are they yeah. doing about that? Are they letting them finish their degree? Are they just not accepting new students? How are they fixing that? What is the issue with that? And I don't know the answer, but I hope that they're treating their students correct. Otherwise, a big F you to KU. Well, yeah, and so it it is different. Sorry, Joe, I am going to talk over you here because I, I do have something to say. And I feel like that's what Joe and I, we talked about this. I don't say things unless i have something to say that's just how i was raised occasionally i say things in a really stupid way but i still make a point and so it's not just ku i have a problem with it's like most american universities because it it extends to this fucking ridiculous weird thing of like let's prioritize sports over actually fucking learning which is what the entire point of going to college is well that's based off of capitalism we live in a capitalist society (laughs) i know and then it it gets into like the players aren't being paid whatever i don't give a fuck about the players when i work at my job and a player comes in i seriously want to say we don't accept your cards the like ku uh like athlete um credit card things i seriously want to say that because it's like Fuck your money. Like, yeah, pay your players, but also, like, sports are just... Uh, it's funny, I had a conversation with my dad, and now we're, now we're a film podcast again, because I was like, what the fuck is the point of sports? And he's like, entertainment for the masses. And I was like, that's... Thank you, dad, for actually saying that, because uh, it, it made me realize, well, what the fuck is the point of film? You know? It it was that's what we're taught in film school is it was the lowest of low art when it first started. It wasn't even considered art. Yeah, that's true. It was just fucking it what what is like this? Art, but... <laughs> yeah. Which is funny because they say a picture is worth a thousand words. What is film if not a thousand pictures stitched together really fast? Wow. So <laughs> you know what they say. Now film sports is... is the same thing as film. It's entertainment for the masses. But yeah. there are still true artists out there that, you know, they, they don't make a movie to please everybody. Not everybody's out there looking for their big blockbuster hit that's going to get them world fame and dominance. And, yeah, well, you know, I, two I, I, great $1 billion. It's, 
Well, I Some guess of them are still doing it just for the art. Mm. Yeah, and and here's coming back to Roman J. Israel Esquire. Let me just look it up and um, see how what box office budget all that stuff was. Budget twenty two million. Box office thirteen million. They lost money. So there you go. But see, that's the thing. I think more but people need to see is, this film. It's not about I, I making like, money. I feel like that there's insurance somewhere in Hollywood where it's like, oh, if you lose money, you can still break even if you pay this amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, We're willing to pay you the difference, so that way you break even. I don't think that like losing money is a big thing anymore. Probably not. And you know, I, I don't really give a shit about box office numbers because... Where does that money actually go? Like, it doesn't really go back to the people who actually, like, work their ass off. It mostly goes either to the director or the studio. And then maybe, well, like, 2% back to the actor. actor. I feel like an act, like, if you get it. Like, for sure, Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah, probably. Uh, Bill Actor, then. Yeah. I wonder what Ed Harris makes on movies. Oh, shit. Yeah. But, um... It's not going towards the new hair. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's my segue into the movie that I actually watched this week that that, that I wanted to bring up during the podcast. It's All right. Phantom. Please do. What's it called? Phantom. Ah. So it's about a, a USSR boat, and I think it's like 1968 that goes out, and they're trying new technology, and they figure out like how to scramble sonar, and they have like a nuclear warhead that they're going to fire into the United States uh, because of the... It's not the Gestapo. Uh, what's the Russian version? The KGB. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, so... So the KGB orders the military to do this, and they have enough clout that they can, like, get it out there. But Ed Harris plays the captain of this USSR boat. And, of course, it was supposed to be his last mission, and he's retiring. But then uh, Lance Henriksen, uh, who's his commanding officer, sends him back out there. Uh, His uh, second mate... Is uh, William Fitch, Fitchner, Fickner? Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, and then there's um, Jason Beige. Big, Beige. I'm horrible with this pronunciation at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big, big name people in this. Uh, David Duchovny is the guy from the KGB that, you know, is riding along to test this new equipment. And they end up, yeah, it, 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 I guess it was based off of a true story where, you know, an old tanker submarine is, like, getting close enough to American property. And, of course, it's the South Pacific, so I'm assuming that it's, like, close to Hawaii. And they're going to set off this nuclear warhead. But, uh, yeah, pretty much Ed Harris intervenes. He was uh, a mutinied for for a little bit because the 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 crew wanted the KGB to think that you know that they were on board with whatever. Well, they try to undermine them and and then they like end up like disrupting the the nuclear warhead that fired. So that way, it just kind of fell apart in the sky and fell into the ocean and didn't go off. Sounds pretty but it, good. Yeah, but it, but I have to say Ed Harris's <laughs> performance was great. I mean, he he was like a captain who had epilepsy due to a um, a head injury, but at the same time, like he there was like certain points where it's like, oh, this Ruski's getting emotional, and I've never seen a, a, a Russian person ever get like emotional about anything i mean i've seen them give like a little smirk (laughs) but 
but I mean, he was like in tears and, and, you know, he, he gave like a performance of a lifetime during that movie. And I just wanted to bring that up and recommend that to our listener that, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, Got yeah, it. maybe you should check that out. Uh, it, which one is it called? It was actually a lot of fun. I, I think I saw a preview for it. Again, it came out in like 2013. I think I was like, oh, that looks interesting, and then I completely forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, What's it called? Phantom. And it has to do with the software where they they called it like the Phantom, where because what it would happen is is that they had this spinning speaker thing project a sound of a different type of boat like a fishing boat or a oh yeah you know, yeah, yeah yeah um isn't that why trigger, they're called like phantom like blips or something like that yeah yeah now, now i remember the story of that yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah i mean i feel like like the over entire story was kind of like ooh, it, well it was like you know just trying to be a blockbuster but I'd have to say Ed Harris gave like a super performance, and, and and for that alone, I would recommend watching it. David Duchovny was pretty good too, but not not like Ed Harris. Oh yeah, that that was the funny thing is I saw that uh, Colin Farrell was in um, Roman J Israel. And that that was weird because I was like, he looks really familiar. And then at the end of it, with Colin Farrell, and it was just like, oh wait, he was in In Bruges. Oh god, this is really weird to see him in a very how, serious how role. Forget those eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because he had like the slick back hair in this one, and he just was kind of always a perpetual mess in In Bruges. <laughs> Point well, What was the movie that he played in where he was Jesse James? American Outlaws. Oh shit! Yeah, that was. Oh my gosh, um, that was a fun movie. It's fun. I'm. I'm not There's gonna not say not it. There's not a lot of fun that goes into that movie. It's not a big thinker, but you can just sit down and then just enjoy the mise en scene. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's mise-en-scene. fun. I'm not gonna say it wasn't fun because it's fun. <laughs> like. uh... I don't know when that one younger brother, he's pissed off because he's got, like, the dinky wanted poster or whatever. (laughs) So he goes to the bank all pissed off. (laughs) You know, that stuff's fun. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Colin Farrell also seemed to have a lot of fun in Fright Night, where he played a vampire. Yeah, but... I heard that was not as good as the original, and the original is actually pretty good, surprisingly. I, I've i never seen the original, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. At that point, Colin Farrell was in his peak. I'm, I mean, I'm not gay, but I'm just like, yeah, that's an attractive guy. People are <laughs> comparing me to that guy. <laughs> okay, then please explain what's attractive about those eyebrows. I really want to know. It's all that bush, they're, right? They're, they're so heavy you can't see him raise them, I guess. <laughs> they carry the weight of the real film. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, I mean that, that's his poker face, is that he can't you you see his his, his the muscles in his forehead, you know, bend up <laughs> and crinkle, but the eyebrows <clears throat> do not move. <laughs> I don't know. I think the first Colin Farrell movie I saw was Alexander, so... Oh, you Yeah, I was pretty young when that came out. Yeah. And you're just... You know, my folks were like, oh, this is supposed to be a good movie, but it's like, holy shit, the only thing you get take away from that movie is Alexander the Great was gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I was 13 when, like, Outlaws came out. And that was the first movie that I saw Colin Farrell in. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, but then he, he did Alexander, and he did he 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 was a big guy. Yeah, I I yeah. think he's still quite. Um, I think uh, his popularity runs with like my crowd, as far as age. I, I'm not sure where it runs. Um, but I mean, if you were to say, well, Colin Farrell is going to be a movie, people are going to be like, okay, we'll pay to see it. Did you see Lobster? No, I did not. I, I'm still case in point. I was trying to read the synopsis. He was in it, he didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go basis. Let's go movie by movie basis. Let's put it that way. Um, oh, before I forget, so... We will segue from American Outlaws to the bit of the news I sent earlier oh, where Emilio excited. Estevez was teasing mm. about Young Guns 3. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to see it, but I want to see it. <laughs> I know, right? I know, Landon. You actually reacted to something for once, and I was like, wow, that's, that's Landon reacting to just random <laughs> shit that we're posting here. And it was like that. That feels like it's important. <laughs> it is important. Very important. I mean, <laughs> uh, Young Guns was a big part of my childhood. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember my parents had the album of uh, the Young Guns two soundtrack, and oh, I used shit. to like dress up in my jeans. <laughs> I was like three or four years old, <laughs> and I put my little cap guns and my cowboy hat, oh. and I just. Bow leg walk, you know. Oh my god! Through the living room, and I'd like pull out my guns and just shoot at the wall. And little and baby I'd... Landon, I need to see a picture of this. <laughs> there is no picture. There's uh... no evidence. He probably burned them all. No, my parents weren't that really interested in me. I mean, it was the '80s. They were probably like a little weirdo. <laughs> Yeah, they probably peeked around the corner and went, huh, and then went back to whatever they were doing. Your dad was reading the newspaper. Darling, please go into the kitchen and make me a sandwich. <laughs> uh, I don't think you know my parents. <laughs> I don't know why his dad sounds like that, but okay. Oh, yes. I mean, also, let's give a shout out to what Landon, your friend that you like for some whatever reason, convinced him to listen to this. <laughs> Oh, David. David Choi, Chicago. Yeah. Hi, David. Hope you enjoy this mess. <laughs> Hello, David. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's too busy with other things to do this. Probably. He's actually gotten into the furniture making business. Oh. And, and okay. I've seen some of his models that he's done. Uh, it, it's really solid. Um, I'd hope so, because I want to fucking sit down in a chair. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 it's like modern furniture that that is like really cool looking. I mean, it's it, it, it's like that shit that costs like ten thousand dollars to buy mm -hmm. retail. It's um, what would happen if IKEA put effort into their product. <laughs> there goes that sponsorship. <laughs> project in the garage i gotta work on from ikea so <laughs> what finish putting two fucking bolts together <laughs> aren't they no, known I for like efficient <laughs> i've never actually assembled anything from ikea aren't they known for efficiency though yeah but you a lot of times you gotta buy the screws <laughs> oh well that's fucking stupid <laughs> yeah they 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 forgo the hardware because that's cheap. What's the name of this one? Because they're known for keeping their Swedish names even in like English speaking <laughs> countries. Just... I don't know. I wasn't there. I was uh, busy working on my aforementioned project. It's called the... the kids to Ikea. <laughs> Did they have the Swedish and meatballs? And then I took a few minutes to unload it from the car. <laughs> I didn't look at the cardboard box. I just carried it. And laid it down, and it's sitting in my garage. <laughs> it's it's the <laughs> the Lampenstunden. <laughs> not to do anything because she needs to order something else to go with it. So, 
Um, it's all like the same shade of balsa wood, right? Nothing's like painted or anything. No, they have painted stuff. Oh wow, they they put some effort into their product now. <laughs> no, IKEA actually has like a wide variety. They they do like leather couches. They oh, do damn. fabric couches. They do bookshelves. They do TV mm-hmm. mounts. It's a leather couch. They provide you the frame, and then they say, okay, here's a local farm near you. Go buy a cow. Wait, like, three oh, years until it's matured. Harvest oh, yeah, the leather. that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works, Stuart. Okay, go on, Farmer Stuart. Tell us how it works. I don't know. Just go stick your hand up a cow's ass, Joe. <laughs> Tell no, me if actually, it's pregnant. The way that it works is a lot of times they forego some of the hardware. <laughs> but also, like... It's it's pretty inexpensive, so you don't expect it to last. Well, but that's the point of furniture. You do want it to last, though, right? No, you don't. <laughs> Depends. No, when, when you're married for nine years, <laughs> something else ha- has got to be non-committal. <laughs> some people, it, it's furniture. <laughs> Other people, it, it's food. Other people, it's kids. Oh, I'm a wine person now. I'm a beer person now. I'm a whiskey person now. No, in in order to commit to a marriage, you just kind of have to not commit to something else. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a little nugget of wisdom. I'm I'm finding like, myself uh, thinking about the future a little bit more, and I'm just like, oh boy. Kids are still way off the table for me, but it's like I don't know. I I could if I could find the right person, I guess, but probably not gonna be in Kansas because Ron White potato <laughs> joke. Insert that. I was here. gonna say I've never seen a redheaded potato before. <laughs> then again, I've never. Well, there been are, there, there are a lot of cute people in Kansas. I will say that, but yeah, but they're cute, they're, but their personalities are usually shit. And I would have punked the wall. I don't know I I guess I'm just like really really picky about people (laughs) well was talking about last week with my folks because they came down and really lovely weather and we were talking and I mentioned how my aunt had said that you know she had us me my little brother and a cousin, we were the only ones who weren't with somebody or married yet. And she was telling me that we, sh- all three of us should get on it. And my mom's like, well, you know, just take your time, find the right person. I'm like, oh, I found the right person. I've got, you know, two, maybe four people picked out. I just got to let them know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and see, that's that's the other thing about our culture here is... This, and, this is just like a real deep dive of an episode, but it's just like the men are still kind of like awkwardly expected to do a lot of things, I feel like. Don't do it. <laughs> well, then you just don't get anywhere, right? And I'm not I'm not actually trying no, to make a sexist no, if, joke. If you don't get anywhere, then that's not the person for you. I mean, what are you, like yeah. 22, 23? Yeah, I'm 22. Yeah, I didn't get married until I was 27, and I still think I was too young. <laughs> yeah, probably. My dad had his first daughter his, like, second to last year in college. So. Yeah. How'd that work wow. out? Uh, well, she now is I, a I'm doctor and... I'm not uh, out in a bad way. I'm just... <laughs> I, I'm honestly asking. How did that work out for him? Well, let's see. He got a divorce and then remarried the same person, so that ought to tell you everything. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean... You know what? Just take your time. Let yeah. it happen organically. If it doesn't happen, guess what? The world's overpopulated anyway. Yeah, that's true. I mean... You, you, your 20s are just about like having fun. You still get to be a kid. You don't have the responsibilities of being an ad- like a true <laughs> adult. Aww. 
just enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it as long as you can. Honestly. That's true. Yeah. I mean, that, that is my advice. And and, yeah. and it's not that I hate my kids. I love <laughs> my kids to death. I'm happy that I'm a father. But honestly, enjoy the freedom while it lasts and it, don't force it to happen sooner rather than later. Don't you know, try to compensate your loneliness. Guess what? Eventually you're going to get to the age where you're like, I wish I was lonely. Yeah. Well, there's there's two types of loneliness. There's fuck I'm miserable, no one loves me, I live by myself lonely, and then there's like I'm taking care of myself really efficiently and I'm happy being lonely because I know exactly what I'm doing in my life. All right, Which I, one of I, those I, two it, people have Guinness? I, I <laughs> It is not a black and white situation. There are varying uh, stages, or well, yeah, stages. yeah. There's there's a huge a spectrum brain. between the two, but like there's there's like the major points, basically. Well, I, to me, it's like you're lonely because why won't anybody love me, and then you're lonely because it's like I'm unfulfilled completely. And I can't even, like, relate to somebody. Well, see, that's funny, though. I had this conversation, sort of, with um, a very good friend who I work with. uh, And they're asexual, it turns out. And it was just kind of like... I I did recommend Bojack Horseman to them. It's like, well, go go watch the character... Go watch the character development Todd and let me know like how accurate that is. <laughs> you want to call it character development? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, point is like they live by themselves. Uh, they live like two minutes away from you, Landon. By the way, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, they're I'd say they're super successful. They've worked in the same job that I'm at for ten years because they went to college and you work got at on. Lunch. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I you're, you're working retail that is not super successful. It's not even retail; I, it's customer service. Like so rent and everything else, and still have money on the side for fun. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you how much fun he has. He's turned his house into like a fucking workshop. He's got two 3D printers, a whole bunch of like woodworking tools. I think he can do a bit of metalworking too. So yeah, it's like this dude can't even park his car in his own garage because he's having so much fun. (laughs) I'd say that's a problem because if he can't afford to have room in his garage for his cars, (laughs) then he has a small garage. Therefore, he's not successful. But I don't know. That's me. I guess it just Uh, depends on how much you value a car, really. Well, I value my car very dearly. Which one? <laughs> the one that uh, sits the outside car. most of the time or the one that you've put in a fucking garage? <laughs> the Ranchero. <laughs> I was going to say, it's the Ranchero. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to make a... This is something that's a piece of shit, but I love it. <laughs> You should. Oh, okay, Discord really <laughs> fucked that up. You might want to say that again, Landon, because all I heard was Lizzie piece of shit. <laughs> okay, I said Lizzie thinks it's a piece of shit, but it's mine, and I love it. And okay. that's who's getting that in the divorce. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I love how you even, even like, threw the thought of a divorce out there. Like, you really better be praying that she doesn't listen to this episode. She must love you. She'll By the way, Landon, down. no no context whatsoever. What's your wife's phone number, just in case? <laughs> uh, eight four seven. Bad boy. <laughs> no, I'm going to send her this episode. <laughs> It's out there. <laughs> okay, can I make a string of comments? Yes. Okay, first of all, for those people, 
you guys were expecting me to make comments about KU basketball. Well, their game was canceled tonight. <laughs> Fucking what? Uh, the player tested positive for COVID. Oh, so Whose but... team? Our team. Oh, fucking course. Uh, yeah, I knew that they so, withdrew. I was going to see how that played out for you. Yeah, because I was really felt like you weren't giving me a straight answer. I wasn't going to tell you. Well, they're not playing. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was being a I mean, dick. they had it on the TV, so I'm I, like, I, okay, I they're going to be playing. They didn't say cancel. Kind of um, second comment. Um, as far as Young Guns 3 goes, I mean, the first one was more historically accurate than the second. Not saying that entirely bothers me. It's just something I got to bring up because that was actually what I wanted to be as a kid was a historian. Uh, well, that and an actor and, uh, you know, president. (laughs) Well, you were president of, let's not go there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's a fun story for next time. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if they did a third one, they can't really call it Young Guns 3. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's but, the uh, Indiana Jones joke, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe they should call it Young like, Guns 3, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but my biggest thing, it's like, the third one would probably, you know, the second one was pushing the historical accuracy. The third one would be like totally off the mark because it's like we're in the realm of Billy the Kid conspiracy theories. Um, oh, what was that mashup that film? Uh, what were I you mean, saying, Landon? Her name was Brushy Bill Roberts, aka yeah, this, Brushy Bill AKA Roberts, that, aka Billy the Kid. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here to be pardoned. Blah 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 yeah. blah. I was offered a pardon seven years and <laughs> three months ago. <laughs> but actually, yeah. I do prefer that. This is one of the rare instances where I prefer the sequel to the original. <laughs> oh my god! I don't what know is... what it is uh... about the sequel, but it, it, to me, it's just like the music's better. Oh yeah, the better. It, the, it, it's just more aesthetically pleasing, and and, and it's and, and there's like a little bit more comedy in it. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely a lot more comedy in it. What uh, if? Yeah. What me, if? Like, it's it, it's a better movie than the first one, but you can't I mean, you can't dismiss the first one and say, oh, well, yeah. the second's better than the first. But you can the, say like, oh, this is. A lot more than the first, the, even though it's like less historically accurate. I think my only problem with the second one, again, historical accuracy. If the movie's entertaining, you know, fuck it. Um, but I think the only problem I had with the second one was I felt like there was just. Somebody pointed out in their review of it, like, there's a lot more going on that's not being told or whatever. It's like, maybe, you know, maybe the actors read something with a lot more in it than what ended up being on the screen. I don't know. A lot more subtext? Uh, I don't... Maybe... I, I don't know. It just feels like there was a lot more that could have been going on in the second one. I Yeah, the second one, I adore that movie. Like like you said, great music, great acting. Um, the ending of the movie, it's one of my all-time favorite endings. And I still get like tears or shivers or a smile when I see it just because it's that fucking great. Sounds but like you're having a it, stroke when you watch it then. It really is. <laughs> I feel like with Young Guns 1, they, they just pile it all in one spot, and it's the peyote trip. And it's like, did you see the size of that chicken? <laughs> <laughs> no, I always love the movie. 
Otherwise, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, this I mean, is fun. Yeah, okay. The first what, one is kind of... Other westerns in the 80s is, is like, the peyote scene. And they yeah. just, like, threw that out and, like, made it so great. And you're like, oh. And then when Young Guns 2 came out, they just... I, I, I feel like that they put more... Of like that peyote feeling. They let throughout. you experience yeah. the peyote instead of you observe someone else experiencing the peyote. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I, not really. But yeah, kind of. I mean, it, it was like the same feeling. I don't know when when I experienced Young Guns. I was so tiny. I associate it with smells and sounds. Oh yeah, and, and like you know, visuals of certain things. It, it just takes me back to a place. What mm-hmm. the... F- hold on, hold on. Let me, let, what the fuck did you... I associated with smells and sounds and... Vi- so you were a human being. Always yeah. have, always <laughs> will be. But- <laughs> yeah. But there, but there are some movies where it's like, oh, it's just a movie, and then there's some that's like, oh, this is a movie. Well, that's that's why I always talk about the difference between a popcorn movie, a movie, and film. Well, I would I, say I that this know. is a movie slash film. Both yeah. of them. But for different reasons. One of them's more like a film slash movie, and then the other one's movie slash film. Yeah. Yeah, that's the okay. But I'm wondering how the how the hell are they gonna do the third one? <laughs> well, they, I hope Rush that Bill Roberts was not the that. only person to old guy who claimed to be Billy the Kid. There were like maybe one or two others, and you know people were always saying like, "Oh, Billy the Kid, no, he's." <laughs> I saw him up in like uh, California or whatever, <clears throat> and. Uh, you know, it, you know, there were people who poked holes in Garrett's story. Yeah. Um, like, instead of Garrett running out and saying, I killed the kid, people were like, no, he said, I think I killed the kid. Or this or that, you know? So, um, so, I mean, they could have a lot of fun with that. And, you know, I love Emilio Estevez. And I'd really like to see him do more stuff. But, hello. Hi, what's up? Did I cut out? Nope. Okay, good. I'm just Why scrolling on Twitter point? while I wait for you guys to stop talking about a movie I have yet to see. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, anyways, uh, moving on to my third point. Uh, just because I want to make it clear. Whenever I criticize somebody, I don't hate them. I just point stuff out in people, and I point stuff out myself. I still love people, obviously, and that's not the Guinness talking. Uh, And I also thought it was funny when we were talking to you, like, I don't care about box office. It made me laugh because when I said that I love Francis Ford Coppola, you said, well, I don't I don't really think he's a good director and I said why and you're like because he's really terrible with money <laughs> uh, yeah that is funny uh, I is. I Roman J Esquire would like to uh, trial try myself against <laughs> myself for being a hypocrite hypocrite uh, against humanity uh, <laughs> <clears throat> But let's be honest, though, he wasn't good with money. No, he, I mean... He was good with making films which involved handling money, which he wasn't necessarily the best at. I think his biggest problem, as far as like money goes, was when he did The Outsiders, and uh, that church accidentally burned down. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> yeah. So I think a lot of what he was doing after 
The Outsiders was trying to pay back on that film. Um, yeah, I don't know what the box office was on Apocalypse Now, but I know they spent, what, three years in the Philippines making that movie, and I know that Brando requested to be paid like a million dollars a day. Jesus. And what, you spent... Apocalypse. What was it? Three days filming and then a week just going over stuff on the script. I don't remember, but um, well, that's surprising. Budget was thirty-one million. Yeah, uh, that's I, not I, as I much as I expected. Guess it what to be. his idea was on that? It's like, oh, it doesn't matter how much it costs. I have a vision, and I want to yeah. see it. I want to fulfill this vision. So maybe yeah. instead of saying something like, oh, he was bad with money, why don't we start with my perspective is yeah. that I think he was bad with money. Because let's face it, Stuart, are you great with money? I mean, I wouldn't say so, I'm fantastic how much with did money. You spend on the with money. Okay, let me put it this way. I have more money invested in the stock market than in the bank right now. Okay. Well, okay, So that put... doesn't say I'm a genius with money, but it at least says I know what money is good for. Mm. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to dwell on this too much cuz Coppola actually is Please good with money. It just hasn't always down. panned out the way he wants. Because, for instance, Bram Stoker's Dracula, which I have to say is one of my all-time favorite films. It's good, but the hair. <laughs> hey, don't, yeah, don't. But I'm not touching that. I am not touching the hair. <laughs> um, it's, it's a beautifully shot film. Yes. It, it terrified me as a kid the first time I saw it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was so wonderful that I actually went back and watched it when I was older, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. But, yeah, I love it. I I have a special collector's edition, which uh, has, I guess you could call it commentary, but it's like, watch Bram Stoker's Dracula with Francis Ford Coppola, and it's something I listened to whenever I feel like it, because the stuff that he says is just so terrific. And one of the things I learned was that one of the things he wanted to do was this kind of stuff that was a callback to... Because one of the things I didn't think about until I saw the movie was Dracula takes place the same year cinema was born. <laughs> and Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? And, that is weird. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about it, cause, but he wanted to do stuff like, you know, Georges Méliès and the Lumiere brothers, and he wanted to do it without the, you know, all the technology that people were using, and a bunch of people were like, oh, there's no way you can do that. So he brought on his own son, who was like, yeah, we can do it like that. <laughs> and then Coppola had the budget pulled out from under him by the studio so there's the particular sequence where he had to use, it's it's that battle sequence in the beginning between the Dracula's army and the Turks and oh, puppets yeah. were used. I kid you just <clears throat> just the stuff that he did just like this this guy is a at the end of the day, I don't care about the money because obvious, because really, what matters is what you get on the camera. Yeah, well, my philosophy with money is, what's I mean, the point? I'm not advocating waste money that could be spent, you know, feeding orphans and. Yeah, like, no, for sure. But in general, what's the point of making money if you're not going to spend it? Uh, well, Mr. Stockbroker, uh, you invested. <laughs> yeah, but that's still technically spending it, because it could just fucking disappear at any minute. No, it, it's 
gambling, I guess. It is, basically. It's it, legalized it, gambling. It's not oh, it. wow. Welcome to our movie. Or you could yeah. Yeah. yeah, speaking of legalized gambling, why don't we just uh, talk about the fact that that's the movie we're working on now, or that's still uh. under wraps. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we are making a film, but it's fucking kind of dead in the water right now. So that's all I have to well, say about that. and it's not Speaking a problem home. with the production. It's just a problem with, you know, the times. So Yeah. Speaking of film, uh, Stuart, mm. uh, the, the lineup has arrived. Oh, uh, yeah. For the Hot Ones episode. I can't wait to not feel my asshole for three days. <laughs> Uh, we, we do have an issue with Alex. He has foregone the wings for Lent. Ah. Uh, uh, but we do have a loophole, which is uh, roasted cauliflower. I was wondering if we were going to do really? that. And yeah, see, here's my thing with meat is I used to hate eating meat with a bone in it as a kid for whatever weird reason. Now I have a reason for why I hate eating meat with bones in it. I want more fucking meat! <laughs> like, yeah. I fucking hate eating actual chicken wings because when I finally grew out of that weirdness of not eating meat with yeah, bones in it, it was like two fucking bites, and I'm just like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, McDonald's chicken McNugget paste has more meat than this. <laughs> it, it's super what? primal. Yeah. Trying Landon. to meat off of the bones, to me, that... Well, I'd say it's better than sex, but... <laughs> I've had sex. It's like they're trying to peel my meat off of my bone. <laughs> okay. Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> Landon, it, in was one, it uh, or in the was other it wings one. for Lent, or is it just the Friday? For Lent in total. Oh boy. Okay. So, so I was gonna say go we could do the Ricky Gervais or, vegan yeah. wings. That's mm-hmm. what he just said. Well, we're not doing vegan wings. We're our our loophole around because, let's face it, vegan wings aren't gonna taste good. And vegan wings, fried cauliflower is vegan wings. As much as a regular wing, I might as well just go ahead and like roast up some cauliflower, toss it in some fucking sauce, and we can eat that instead. And it's gonna be delicious. It's gonna be good. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be relatively healthier than eating fucking meat glue. Okay, so you're down for the cauliflower. Eh, why not? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because they do do that on Hot Ones. It yeah, was, actually, uh, Paul Rudd, a uh, KU Rudd, graduate, uh, I did see that episode. You alum. Yeah. Fucking thanks for the echo. <laughs> I love the overlap. All I could hear was what sounded like Landon saying "bum, bum, 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 bum." What company jingle is that? I don't so, know. Yeah. So yeah, it, well, I guess in the spirit of Ku, we could do it, uh, Paul Rudd style, uh, with the cauliflower and. Um, we could either do tomorrow evening or sometime on Sunday. What works best for you? Uh, let's do tomorrow evening because I have a production meeting with a really awesome person who is animating something for me. That's all I'm going to say right now. It involves this podcast, uh, but it's going to take probably another two weeks or so hey. before we see anything. Is it K? Yes. Well, of I love Kay. Kay is, is it super that episode? Yes. I'd like to have a beer with Kay. I don't know if she drinks beer. That's a good question. I definitely want to have Kay on uh, after we've released the thing. Well, um, I would buy a drink for Kay, and yeah, I'd either have a beer or the same thing. But regardless, I'd like to pick Kay's head. Oh yeah, I've I've already kind of done that on a number of yeah, things. Any propositions or anything like that for her, but I I would just like to, you know, get to know her a little bit better and just I don't know. <laughs> well, speaking of awesome people who make animations, like what I do with you, just be friendly, <laughs> watch a movie, 
hang out. And then I'll awkwardly have to sit there as you yell at your kids. <laughs> oh, I, I think Kay would really enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give her something Who to draw. <laughs> yeah. The veins in my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. <laughs> But speaking of awesome people who do animation, uh, the fourth episode of Hell of a Boss comes out the same day that our dear listeners will be listening to this in, well, today, but we're recording this three days in the past, so, yeah. Wait, past, present. Okay, we're recording it now. I had too much to drink. Apparently. God damn it, this is fucking space balls, isn't it? <laughs> this is now? Yes, sir, it's the present. What about the future? I don't fucking know. <laughs> When? How? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> okay, well, tell K hi from me. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think we're at it like an hour and 11. 15. Hour and 11 by my actual recording. So, yeah. Um, real quick, I want to say... Hi, Patrick. Uh, <laughs> real quick, oh, I want to say... God, well, hi, March. <laughs> uh, I finished reading Path of the Assassin finally uh, yesterday, or according to when this was recorded. And... Um, really interesting ending. It makes me question a few things. I know Joe almost fucking screamed at me apparently because uh, I was like well according to this book which is based off of historical texts <laughs> I, I'm just saying uh... I'm not going to question your sources I'm just saying that the books are based off of what the authors did a bunch of fucking research so I mean yeah I know it's, it's the thing with research there's always going to be discrepancies well, there's Wait, research, before, before and then there's Dan Brown. Arguing, before you guys start arguing, <laughs> I have to say, I tried a new crawfish meat in my crawfish etouffee this week. Boudreaux. What the fuck? You're That's half the price, but you are just as much flavor. Buy your Boudreaux's crawfish tails. Wonderful stuff. Mm-mm. I guarantee <laughs> Thanks for the fucking sponsorship, I guess. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> that I'm sounds cool. Right. <laughs> this sounds like a cat fight that I don't want to get into. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not trying to start shit. I'm just saying that, like, look, one guy did research, another guy did his research. Why? Why do we have to believe the textbooks that we're told to read? Why can't Path of the Assassin be seen as a textbook, really? There's a question for you. I, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. I'm just glad he pointed out there's people who do research and then there's Dan Brown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you pointed that out. I know how much you hate him. <laughs> I don't hate, Like I said, I don't hate him. You're very disappointed just, with him. I'm pissed off by what people do with him. It's like, I'm not mad. I promise you, I'm not mad. But you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> You kiss that diaper rash. <laughs> you Boudreaux's butt paste. What the Thank fuck? You, Boudreaux, I guarantee. Okay, now you're yes. turning crawfish into an ass wipe or something. What? <laughs> no, no. They're two separate companies. There's uh, Boudreaux's butt paste, which is actually like a, a, a diaper rash cream. What the fuck? It, 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 trust me, it does wonders. I used to. Is use that it like ass day. bleach? <laughs> no, you use it on babies, you dumbass. <laughs> they, Have they, you they, seen some people? Are brown brown enough babies. yet? Joe, whose ass are you fucking looking at? <laughs> okay, let let me lay this out for you chronologically. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, when you're a baby, you haven't pooped enough. For your asshole to be brown, it don't need to be bleached. So what you use when you've got your diaper rash from wearing a diaper, you use Boudreaux's butt paste. What the fuck? Now once you start to get into high school and your hormones change, 
you pooped enough that your asshole is brown. Maybe you want to think about it, but maybe you ain't having sex yet. Don't worry about it. Don't get your asshole bleached. By the time that you're doing doggy style, get your asshole bleached. Or you're just a dude. But, but <laughs> when you eat crawfish at Touffet, I'm telling you, for the price, you get the same quality with Boudreaux's crawfish tails. Mm-mm. I guarantee. Well, we started out with a really serious note, and thank you, Landon, for turning this around. <laughs> I'll do my best. I think I pissed myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I turned from Boudreaux's butt paste to butt bleaching to Boudreaux's crawfish. Don't tail. forget the doggy style you just threw in there. <laughs> well, that's when you need to get your butthole bleached. Somebody's got to look down and see that. Mm, you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to see people seeing your poopy frown. What the mm -mm. fuck? Bleach it. Uh, okay, what about that Ricky Gervais uh, video I sent you about gay animals and it was like blowhole sex between dolphins? That's essentially nose fucking, right? Uh, and on that note, good night. Not, okay. <laughs> not necessarily. Wait. Where are you going, not bitch? <laughs> their penises down into the blowholes i think yeah but the blowhole is the equivalent of a dolphin's nose i did, not watch, nose, I did right? not watch the video because okay i did not watch the video because a I... when i had time to watch the video i was either with my kids or they were just asleep and i was watching a fucking movie and i was not about to be bothered with some fucking ricky gervais fucking political bullshit it's not political though Oh, he, he has political subtext. He does, but not in this one. It's just gay animals. That's it. I was going to say, it's just animal porn, apparently. <laughs> yeah, but the political subtext is the fact that yeah. you know, animals are gay and people are too. <laughs> this Duh. fish is red, this point. fish is blue. Dr. Seuss is cancelled, we are too. <laughs> Oh, we're canceled? <laughs> so I can say all I want now, you <laughs> waffles. <laughs> I love me some good Ricky Gervais, but that is not an escapism type of comedy. He always yeah. has some political subtext behind what he says that makes me think, oh, I actually have to read further into this. So when I want to shut my brain off, Ricky Gervais is not my guy. Well, then Eddie Izzard should be. <laughs> Actually, I prefer Jim Jeffries. Oh, yes, Jim Jeffries. Because uh, he really? just comes Jim Jeffries? Out of yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what do you want tonight? Eh, hey, yeah, you fucking. <laughs> he, he does a good job of, like, saying something in subtext, but then he'll, like, explain it. Where you don't actually have to think about what he's saying because he tells you about it, and that's, like, one fifth. Of his comedy is the fact that he says something and then he explains it to you. Yeah, but okay, I think between last I'm episode and this scared. one, I don't want to think about like, oh, it could be taken this way or this way. It's like, no, nope. Jim Jeffries is gonna say this and then he's gonna tell me what he means by it. Okay, but real quick before we go, listen. The Golden Globes happened, and everyone kind of just, like, didn't give a shit this year because COVID. And so, I, I re-watched the whole entire, like, Ricky Gervais opening monologue thing. And I still applaud him for what he said. Because, honestly, yeah, maybe I'll have a different perspective when I'm actually in the industry or something. But, yeah, seriously, like, fuck a lot of, like, studios. But it is bad when you see Tom Hanks go, oof. <laughs> yeah, cringing. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that word, cringe. It's cringe. It's like moist. No, I like moist. 
I love moist. A lot of people hate the word moist, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that I hate Ricky Gervais. I actually enjoy listening to Ricky Gervais. I find him to be a stimulating comedian where, you know, it's like if if I thing like if I feel like I've been sitting in the house all day and I haven't done anything, a little Ricky Gervais, it's like, oh, that that kind of wakes my brain up a little bit. Oh, yeah, a little bit goes a long way yeah. with him, but I love his bit. I feel on... Nikki There's Blaze are more there. stimulating. <laughs> and, and I also feel like I agree with some, well, like, I'm not going to say all of the things that he says, <laughs> yeah. but I, I do agree with, like, what he says. He makes a valid point. It's like, hmm. <laughs> Well, it's, well, that's it's, any it's, person. They make a valid like point. That, that is a valid argument. I'm willing to consider that. Yeah. And uh, then sometimes I'm like, you know what? He's right on that subject. Or he, other times I'm like, you know what? I still don't agree with What the with fuck it. are you eating? <laughs> Salad. <laughs> at nine, at ten o'clock at night. Okay. <laughs> Matilda didn't well, there's finish probably it. A reason. Sitting on the table. I'm at the table. I've been drinking. I'm eating the rest of her salad. Oh, you're drinking too. Yeah, I finished off the sake, so. I had some Guinness left, so. Oh, yeah, we never did talk about if uh, Eye of Argon should be made into a film. What are your guys' thoughts? Okay, I blacked out. Um, <laughs> not not because of the drinking, but my my computer went to sleep. Is what I'm saying. Oh. So anyway, normally when I'm doing my podcast, I'm drinking. <laughs> yep. It's canonically drinking, known because you pop the beer in the middle of one. <laughs> when I'm not drinking, I'm super quiet. <laughs> yeah. I actually feel like our podcast could become a drinking game <laughs> based on how many times I've described a movie as fun. <laughs> uh, so that'd be two drinks and that's about it. <laughs> well, did I tell you about Son-in-Law? That's a fun game. I mean, that's a fun movie. That's a fun game. <laughs> then, um, uh, Karate Kid, fun movie. And then, um, I don't know. <laughs> no, like normally when I'm giving my critique on a movie, I'm, I always describe it as fun. That's like, how it should be described, though, right? Like, what's the point of watching it if you're not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> yeah, but well, I always use the word fun. Yeah, but I mean, you're having fun watching it, right? So that's basically the most correct adjective you could use. Yeah. But I think that there could be a drinking game. Maybe we can turn one of our episodes into me just like reviewing like a stack of movies <laughs> and describing fun or not fun. It's it's gonna be the Darth Vader Eddie is thing. This one is fun and this one is fun and this one is fun and this one is fun. Did you dry these in a fun forest? <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the SNL skit with the yay and the nay. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, anyway, I have Argon. Do you think it should be a movie, Landon? No. <laughs> I I will. Do you remember that say... one movie that I described in that one podcast about like the director who was infatuated with the lady and like just oh yeah, uh, what was it? The one I with feel David like it Kirby, would be right. That. Yeah, it had David Carradine. Maybe I can pull it up really quick. David Carradine. Oh, that's sad. What? Yeah. Uh, when I pull, pull, when I put into Google David, it just comes up as David dot n c i f c r f dot gov. Because oh. I've been doing so much research on. <laughs> Yeah, on proteins and uh... that joke oh, of my... I was doing actual work, but I couldn't like 
but I'm too smart to describe it to people, so I'd rather just watch porn. It's easier to tell them what's happening. <laughs> well, I mean, I can try to describe it to you, but I don't think that you would get it. It's... Yeah. I don't even get it. It's oh, the warrior and the sorceress. The warrior and the sorceress. Oh, oh that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Well, see, I have Argon to me. The character of Grigner fits like terrifyingly perfect with. Uh... Oh my god, I had it in my head. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan. Conan. Yeah, like it's yeah. already been made basically. It it's already uh, a film. <laughs> uh uh Joe, am I wrong? <laughs> I mean, in the sense that if you were talking about Conan the Destroyer, then you're dead on accurate. Yeah, I know, that's the one. <laughs> Because Conan the Destroyer is awful. <laughs> yeah. Not even Wilt Chamberlain can save that movie. <laughs> hey, there's another KU name. Funny. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the only reason I'd see Eye of Argon made into a movie is, and this probably had to do with you comparing Eye of Argon to The Room <laughs> in terms of infamy. I think that it would definitely be a movie for Tommy Wiseau. What if Tarantino directed it as his final film, though? Oh, uh, I can't see him doing that. But what if? Just just try to picture it. Okay, what if... Uh, mm, that would be the weirdest thing ever. Yeah, but go out with a fucking bang, right? Yeah, but this would be weirder than his foot fetish. <laughs> well, I think there is a foot fetish in the Eye of Archon. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, uh, I mean, the Eye of Argon would obviously be intentionally made as a bad movie. It, okay. It's like if you dig up an old Ed Wood script <laughs> and you were going to make it, you know you have a legacy to live up to. Oh, a bad legacy. Man. Okay, if it were to be a somewhat remotely good film, who would you want to direct it and who would be the top billing? Uh, hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I love Jason Momoa. So. I like Momoa. I'd see him do it. Girl Scouts. Uh, Mimosa, Momoa cookies, whatever they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Momoa, Mimosa. Momoa, Momoa, Momoa. Momoa. Uh, oh. I want some Momoa. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, man. As far as directors go, um. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Good question. Uh, that's a tough one. I'm trying to think of an action director who is so... I don't want to say so bad they're good, but like the movies they are are like a guilty pleasure. What about James Gunn? Like, not, not just for memes, but like, because... He's done Guardians of the Galaxy, and, like, they're just so over-the-top and wacky that they're fun. Right? Wouldn't that work? Mm. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, actually, actually... I like John Carpenter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, wait, 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 wait. What if we got... What if Kevin Smith directed? Uh, that hurts my brain trying to picture something, actually. <laughs> oh, wait, I know. Landon, you just jogged my memory. It's not John Carpenter. John Carter, that's the film. That. 
Conan Carter. That oh. that plus Conan the Destroyer is basically the Eye of Argon in a nutshell. If it were to be a film, just mash the two together in a really awkward way, and you basically have the Eye of Argon. Wow. What about oh. Eli Craig? That's a name I have not ever heard before. What what name? Eli Craig. That one sounds familiar. He would do a solid action movie. He did a uh, Dale and Tucker versus Evil. Oh. Yeah, that would that would work. Yeah. Um. Or Coppola, if you just need to burn some money. <laughs> Um, or my can we see we probably see Michael Bay doing this let's be honest if if you want a genuine answer out of me I stand by Tarantino I think I think he should attempt it wait wait what's that oh shit who's that one director he boxes his critics uh, oh Uwe Boll yeah I think <laughs> yeah. that's it Oh god! There's. there's I mean, why in not? In a while. <laughs> His movies are a guilty pleasure. They really are. I don't think I've seen one. Uh, you've never seen Blood Rain? Oh, Blood Rain! Nope. Oh my god! Shut the fuck up with the Blood Rain! <laughs> <laughs> I played the game. I watched the movie. I loved the movie when I was a kid. I'd probably look back and be like. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I think I saw the second one before I saw the first. Oh, but th- those titties and the, and the... Oh, yeah. No, and, no. And the jail bars. Oh, my God. That... Oh. Yeah, but think, think about it. You look at that movie and you're like, wait. It's like you're just dropping names of all these people that are in this. It's like, wait, is that Michael Madsen? Is that Ben Kingsley? <laughs> Holy fuck, is that Meatloaf? <laughs> <sighs> oh, Meatloaf. Oh, God, that reminds me of another movie. <laughs> oh, but who was uh, the leading lady? It was... Oh, uh... Uh, shit. You had to say that. Um... Kristana Loken, who oh, was in one of the Terminator movies. Oh shit, it's got Billy Zane, Michael Paré, oh, Michelle yeah. Rodriguez, Ben Kingsley, Michael Madsen, Matthew Davis, Meatloaf, yeah. Udo Kier. Oh, when fuck, I watched of course it, Udo when Kier I was was younger, I didn't even appreciate the actors that were in it. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I liked the movie. It was kind of a guilty pleasure, but hey. Not even a guilty pleasure, it's just a pure pleasure that you take to your bathroom in your thoughts. <laughs> and then you make guilty. I, think I am you not just revealed far anything. too much. <laughs> if if somebody catches you. Mom, not now, I'm watching a movie. <laughs> in the bathroom? Stop it's, bothering uh, me. In my room. It's educational. Oh, God. Okay, so it's called Blood Rain? Yeah, yeah. Blood Rain. With a Y. Awesome video game. Oh, what the fuck? With a Y? Yeah, R-A-Y-N-E. What All the word. fuck? Oh, there it is. Yep. I'm gonna fuck with that tomorrow. Fuck this shit. Sorry, I was trying to do a little bit more research and figure out how to look at uh, alternate splicing chromosomal layouts on Partech, and I'm just like, nope, not happening. So, <laughs> oh, I it sounds like you just vaguely described this podcast. <laughs> it no, sounds like no, you just... not the podcast. 
<laughs> While we're talking about Blood Rain, I'm like, oh, I know this. I can just like chime in and hang out. And I love how I Google it, hit images, and it's just the same woman over and over and over and over and over. There's no fucking images from the movie. It's all just fan art at this point. She's so hot. Oh, not man. really. I gotta say, La- not lady, no. please. <laughs> not no. She's like a stripper clown, if anything. That's the a vibe stri- I'm getting. No, that's Harley Quinn. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like Harley Quinn. But and like, there's a problem with Harley Quinn? You need to veer away from the fan art and look at the actual act. Well, I'd fucking love to, but there's like no <laughs> movie. I'm yeah. looking at David Carradine's filmography, and I just have the inclination to go back and watch Lone Wolf and the Quaid. Speaking of Lone Wolf, I've checked out Lone Wolf and Cub. Uh, the mangas, so I'll start reading those and giving weekly updates, I guess. I was gonna say, go ahead. Um, I love the fucking kid in the cart. (laughs) Um, Where it shoots out knives on the side. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, um, what was that? When we were, around the same time we were talking about Lone Wolf and Cub in school, that one film where it was, um, uh, something fist or something uh blood fist five fingers of death maybe oh, where it was like that the weird fucking music in the trailer <laughs> don't get me started <laughs> i fucking love that i want to go back and watch the trailer right now <laughs> i was about to kill someone i heard that no and then you whistled that shit all the time oh or no it wasn't no, it was the, uh, no, it wasn't that tune, but it was a whistle. Yeah, it was the one from Kill Bill, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was that one. Whatever it was, <laughs> oh, shit. So, Stuart, I, I uh, put up the poster image for you. Ah, there yeah. it is, yeah. That's what, like, half my customers look like when they come in. <laughs> Who knew really? Gandhi would look so good as a vampire? <laughs> I'd on my wife more if that's what my customers look like. <laughs> I love how every now and then there is a joke that you just throw out there. <laughs> of you cheating on your wife. Oh, God. <laughs> that's the kind of humor that we have in this relationship, and that's why this relationship works. <laughs> She can listen to this. She'll get the comedy. Thankfully. In maybe uh, four more days. <laughs> four more mm-hmm. days. It's coming out in like less than, well, yeah, less than 48 hours, so. Don't hurt yourself, Stuart. <laughs> no, not. She actually listens to this less than I do. And the only reason I listen to this is because I'm listening to it now. <laughs> I don't go back and re-listen to my shit. It's like I it's out there in the world. I'm not gonna like harp on it. If I hear my voice, I find my voice very annoying. So if I hear it, it's like, oh great, I get to listen to myself for like an hour, an hour and twenty minutes, an hour and thirty minutes. And and then I'm gonna like gonna over criticize it, and then I'm gonna hate myself for doing it. And why do that? I just might as well enjoy now for now. And then when it, once it's out in the world, if somebody brings it up later, I'll be like, well, you don't like it. Why don't you like it? You know, actually have a conversation about it. And if they have a good argument, I'll be like, you know what, you're right. I won't do that again. And if they don't, then I'll be like, well, fuck you. Way to make this come full circle. They'll be like. like. (laughs) Yeah, what's the point of listening to this? I mean, I I would like to listen to one episode just to hear, like, how you edit it and, Uh... like, add in sound effects and everything like that. But I'm, I'm just not there yet. I don't really do sound effects except for like maybe within the last couple of episodes I've added just like a round of applause every now and then. I know this one's going to have it. 
But yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, to me, it's like, why listen to it? I remember having the conversation. I remember that it was me, you, and Joe, and or me, you, and Stuart in some cases. But, it, I mean, I'm a part of the conversation. Why do I need to re-listen to it? I'm not getting quizzed on this. If somebody has a problem with what I said, then maybe I'm willing to go into pop quiz mode. But guess what? I can ask them questions, too. Uh, just oh, wait until we have our own fucking I booth say? at Comic-Con. <laughs> I don't listen to it. Be more specific. What did I say offensive? Okay, what context did I say that in? <laughs> I how Landon's just fighting good. himself right now. <laughs> Could you handle being one of those booths at Comic Con? No, I, I would go full on Ricky Gervais, like where where he he's like, oh, they're just fucking autograph hunters. Well, that was like Jim Jeffries, but he's like, oh, they're just autograph hunters. They're a fucking mess, and I don't mean their clothes. There's something wrong with their DNA. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. I got a squirt. Oh God, <laughs> Jesus! Go Christ. right ahead. But I yeah. Mean, I would, I would nice lose my shit is, at Comic-Con, probably. The only nice thing is if you were the table at Comic-Con, at least you know you have a seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking Comic-Con. Have we talked about that on this yet? No, we haven't. Oh, that's... We're already, like, 40 minutes over, so what the hell's another 20 minutes? But, like, <laughs> let's save it for next time, though, because, seriously, that was funny as hell. Looking back on it, it was funny experiencing well, it it was god awful when did we go to comic-con why did we go to comic-con i no, dragged I your when when uh 20 it was 2019 18? wasn't it i think it was 2019 jesus that feels one sec i i've got weird. the let me just pull up facebook here <laughs> uh yeah the problem is if we had a table at comic-con i'd either be Overinflating my already overinflated ego, signing autographs, or I'd be staring at tits. That's. <laughs> uh, it depends, because you remember some of those costs. Oh, God, that is so fucking princess like. <laughs> I told you not to look. I told you. <laughs> oh, shit. That was a oh, God. <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, we gotta talk about this on the next episode. <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna say... Oh, God. I think <laughs> it's been about Leia. two years. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. Oh. Wow, I've posted more on Facebook than I thought. Oh, my God. I still haven't read any of the books I bought there. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I bought the brand new Brandon Sanderson book <laughs> and met the dude. Oh, yeah, you did get books. That's yep. right. I have finally watched... I think I've officially watched all of the uh, Studio Ghibli films I picked up. But... Really? Yep, still haven't touched the Brandon Sanderson book yet. And I love... I love that series. It was really good. So I need to almost go back and March read it. March 30th. Wow, holy shit. It has been. <laughs> 2019. Yeah. Oh, God. God, that's so weird to think back to 2019. How, like, it was great, and then it wasn't. Yeah. It's like me in 2003. <laughs> well... I feel like I missed part of this conversation, but I just had to throw <laughs> that in there. Don't worry, we'll definitely go into it in greater detail next time. <laughs> well, honestly, 2003 was, was pretty good. I think it hit around 2004. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> I don't know what was happening politically or economically or socially, but... So you don't right. know what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Wish I knew then what I knew now. Don't we all? 
Isn't that a song? Wait, I said that in reverse. I, I, I wish I knew now what I knew then. Absolutely nothing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ignorance is bliss. Uh, oh, now you come around to my side of things. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's coming around to your side, Stuart. I'm, I'm willing to empathize. I'm willing to to merit everything for its value. And that's about the amount of a grain of salt. So It's how the fucking Louisiana chef measures things. There we go, it's a perfect teaspoon. Oh, you're talking about Justin Wilson, not... <laughs> yeah. Perfect teaspoon, let me show you. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh. But was that not good? I mean, it, it, to me, it tasted like a like a pot roast on steroids. I genuinely I want to up. have it again. It was so good. Well, you, honestly, I, I I did make my crawfish etouffee, and I thought about inviting, but then I was like, you know what? I'm kind of under the gun. Yeah. And I'm already like in the middle of a project, so I'm gonna make it again. But I did find. The fact that I don't have to go all the way to Kansas City and spend sixty dollars on crawfish tails in order to make this, I can just get it local for like twenty dollars, and I can make it whenever. So, whenever is it you're local, ready. local though, or is it like Checkers. the next state over local? Checkers. Yeah, but where do they source it from? Uh, I I think that they. The creek out back. <laughs> I think they parboil it in Louisiana. It's a, it's another Louisiana company, but uh, where I used to get it from, they did sixteen ounce packs, and of course, well, to be honest, it was like four pounds for sixty dollars. So it cost me like thirty dollars to make this. Whereas this, I'm like adding two and a quarter because it's twelve ounces. So I'm doing 36 ounces, which translates to 16. Anyways. <laughs> Pumba, <laughs> lie down before you hurt yourself. Sorry. It comes out to like two and a quarter pounds, so it's like a quarter pound extra crawfish. But the crawfish still tastes good. It's fresh. It's good. It's it, it, it's not a bad crawfish to eat. Which was what I, what I was worried about. I was worried about it being like out of season and it just tasted too fishy or too like muddy mm. or dirty. Yeah, see that's why I kind of don't eat like any fish anymore really. I've just had too many bad experiences that I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm just done. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I went into this with some skepticism, and and I did explain to the girls, this may not be as good, but it turned out that it, it's just as good, but the price point is way better. So I'm going to go back to Checkers and get some more Boudreaux's crawfish tails and love the shit out of that. And maybe bleach your asshole while you're at it. <laughs> Oh, I don't have to with all the hot sauce I eat. <laughs> no, 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 no. There, there ain't no things. It's just pure liquid. Oh my god. Out. Oh my god. Wipe it right off. Please describe the color while you're out. <laughs> well, well, sometimes it's yellowish. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> when I've had wine, it's kind of like a darker. I don't know, like. Closer to black. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh my God. There's oil coming out of his asshole. <laughs> I gotta tell you. I mean, I've been <laughs> drinking a lot of beer a lot of years. Some weird things come out of my butt. <laughs> you learned to Oh, have, have I seen you, you that? Day, you enjoy it. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> uh, where is that? Oh my god. 
you're having the solid dukes, you're not drinking enough water. That's my saying. Uh, the solid dukes. Always chase uh, with water. Okay, one sec. Or... Oh, no, not that. Son of a bitch. Uh, I think I may have also have IBD, but... <laughs> Jeez. Oh, you suck. Oh god, who sent what? I have to log into Facebook to see this. Ugh, I don't want to log in. Joe, just take a fucking screenshot. Okay. I love a bitch. I love how we've gone like 50 minutes over. <laughs> oh, that's fine by me. Wait, which one's screenshot? Yeah, let's screenshot. Okay. Yeah, I made the complaint earlier to to a friend. It's like, oh, you gotta work, you gotta do stuff today. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, I'd prefer to day drink and watch Karate Kid too, but <laughs> I mean, for some reason, I just want to watch Karate Kid too. I think it's because I watched the latest episode of, or the latest season of uh, Cobra Kai. Yeah. And they refer a lot to Karate Kid too. So I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely want to like rewatch that. But then I'm also on the belt because uh Cool World is on Amazon Prime. And I'm like, oh I could definitely go for some cool world, so Oh Jesus, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm Buttman. <laughs> You know, just just to go with uh, Landon's topic, I uh, thought it was appropriate. Oh my god! Okay, I feel like we're out of conversation. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I remember when I was in third grade, it was like one of those agent oh, computer things that you know back in the nineties we didn't know about. And in art class, I mentioned noids don't have sex with doodles, and the teacher was like, what did you say? And I said, noids don't have sex with doodles. <laughs> what the fuck? I love how I was trying to wrap this up, and Landon just tells a weird fucking story. <laughs> well, now he's got me thinking. <laughs> it, it's a quote from uh, Cool World. We. <laughs> Gabriel Byrne and Brad. Oh, Penn. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've because, met, because I've we were expected to draw like a cartoon character, and I drew it. And then after I was done, I'm like, Noids don't have sex with Doodle. <laughs> I'm glad you learned that lesson. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I didn't get in trouble for that. I mean, I knew that. The teacher was thinking about that for a little bit, and I'm like, oh my god, am I in trouble? What, what happened? And, and, and that's like the only age appropriation story that I have, where it's like, oh, maybe kids shouldn't watch certain things. <laughs> because, I mean, my dad used to let me watch, like, Robocop. We watched, you know, John Wayne movies. We watched... I feel like that's the classic childhood for kids at certain generations, though. Yeah, I mean, but I I would, you know, just watch all these action movies. But the one that stuck with me was Cool World because of the fact that I, like, almost got in trouble for it. Oh, man. And I think it's just because I did not understand completely in the third grade what Noids Don't Have Sex With Doodles was. So I think that kind of bailed me out. (laughs) The teacher was a little sympathetic and going, okay, well, your parents should not let you watch that, but... (laughs) But at the same time, she probably went home, poured herself a glass of wine, and watched the movie. <laughs> Looking back, she might have. <laughs> it was wrong. I mean, at least you learned that. I never learned that lesson. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I was smart enough to, like, pick up on the cues. I'm like, oh, she's thinking this over. <laughs> Am I in trouble? <laughs> yeah, well, that's you. Well, you got into grad school, so I, I guess you did something, right? I and talk about how I shouldn't say things like that. And then, you know, it's like, okay, well, I, I guess I could be in a lot more trouble, but... Now that I'm older, I think that that the memories are skewed. <laughs> All I know is is I did not get sent to the principal's office that day, but I could have. You could have. It it could have been worse. For whatever reason, yeah. I'm now thinking about the. Uh, uh, wow, Jesus. Uh, Judge Dredd movie with uh, Stallone. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. I am the <laughs> I am the Oh, my God. That movie was great. <laughs> I love that movie. It was great for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Surprisingly, it was. What are you talking about all the wrong reasons? It was great for all the right reasons. We turned on since then. <laughs> oh god. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, that was a time of liberation, and now we live in a cloud of PC. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna disagree wholly with that, but um. Yeah. I mean, there were strong female characters. Name one. That were not sexualized, but... I Name... felt like Diane Lane was pretty uh, strong. And not sexualized. Was pretty strong. <laughs> well, I was trying to think how to finish that sentence. Yeah, pretty so strong. Long, long pause on pretty. <laughs> how about fair? Well, she is pretty, so don't get me wrong. I do her. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck it. Let the record show that Joe did say that. Uh, <laughs> exhibit A. Go you to his chores. You feminist. You 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 can chalk that up as like me being sexist, but women do that too. Where it's like, oh, I. I'd do that. I'd, I'd I have sex do. with George Clooney. Who would? What appeal does that schmuck have? <laughs> I'd do him. <laughs> what if he doesn't bleach his asshole, though? <laughs> I would not do George Clooney. I, I, I think too many people would want that. Matthew oh. McConaughey has, like, a lot of weird fans. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't do Matthew McConaughey too. Who would I do? As far Hugh as Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Wait, did you say what would I do? No, who? Okay, I'm not objectively really concerned. A human being, come on. Um. Oh, who's my biggest guy crush? Lizzie knows this. Uh. Yeah, well, I for. think mine is pretty well known. Ed Wood. Johnny Depp. Well, Ed Wood, then. <laughs> well, I'd be giving him the wood. Oh, my fucking God. I'm giving this to Johnny, if you're listening, I'm waiting. Joe, and you tell me I'm a creeper. That, that one. <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell? <laughs> Uh, uh, who's your guy crush, Landon? <clears throat> trying to think. I think I'm putting too much pressure on it. Lizzie knows, <laughs> but she's asleep. The so... first dude that comes to mind, just say it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a mental blank. It's it's there, but it's... <laughs> um, well, we know whose ass you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
in, you'd be like, oh god, more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we really need to stop recording this so late at night. <laughs> Well, while you're thinking on that one, I remember a time when... Tony Banderas, how about that? Oh, yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. I'd give it up to Antonio. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. I remember this one time my mom and my grandmother went out to the movies, and I think it was around the time the trailer for Logan came out and my grandfather <laughs> apparently was like paying a lot of attention to that particular trailer and at one point she just screamed don't hurt you <laughs> uh, oh my god that's that's one of the last memories I have of her <laughs> That that's sweet. Yeah, in a really weird way. <laughs> I'm gonna say sweet. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of like my. I mean, my grandparents are. Uh, I have to laugh about. I have to share this because I just feel like it. But my mom's parents, they got. Uh, free tickets or whatever for a matinee performance and there we're going to see okay what's a good movie what's a good movie oh this is Robert De Niro on it it's gotta be good guess what they went to see Taxi Driver nope I don't know Dirty Grandpa <laughs> <laughs> oh, that wasn't God. even the worst part the worst part was they stayed through the whole thing because well we had the tickets. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> yep. And if uh, anybody's seen Dirty Grandpa, they know how bad that is. I haven't, but I know how bad it is. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Oh my god. All I remember is the low hanging nutsack out of the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh god. Yeah. That's another good hot ones is uh Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> oh yeah. And then of course there's Steve O. Actually I should probably watch Steve O and then watch Karate Kid or Cool World. <gasps> then after that I'm gonna go to bed and then wake up and cry myself back to sleep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, um, since I haven't heard anything from uh, Michael Kovach or Edward Bosco, I think I'm just done uh, trying to reach out to them. Uh, I would love to have them on the show if this ever reaches their ears, but um, you know, at the moment, I, I hope they're ignoring me because they're just too busy recording the next episode of Has Been Hotel. Uh, but it would be really cool to get Paul Rudd on here and talk about his experience at KU. Because he seems like one of the most genuine actors, honestly. He seems like he's got you know, a great career. You no. Know, one of the most genuine people. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. I, 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 like, honestly, I think that I would have... Not like a boner, but like... <laughs> The more feminine version of that, I like the heart area. Stiff nipples. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying, man. No, I think like talking to him would just like so emotionally move me. Oh yeah. Yeah. It'd but probably get like, me to shut up as well. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I think. I don't know. I might actually like reach out and be like genuine with Paul Rudd. Just don't talk about your car again. Be a little bit more animated. No, a little bit more, you know, less 
Ben Stein, Ben Stiller. Ben Stein. <laughs> yeah, Ben Stein. Who the fuck is like, ben oh, yeah. Stein? I feel so good. Wait, Stuart, did you say who's Ben Stein? Yes. Oh my. Yeah, it's Landon, Ben Stein. Landon, please drive over and beat the shit out of him. I got to realign the the tires on the Chero <laughs> and then I'm going to drive over. Well, I also have to grease the, I, I put new tie rod ends on the Chero, so I got to do that. I got to grease them, and then I got to realign the the steering. And then I'm going to drive over there, and I'm going to hit them with my car. <laughs> okay, that seems like a lot of work just to do that, but thank you. <laughs> well, there, I mean, there goes a lot of effort into hitting Stuart. <laughs> Yeah, don't I know? That way he appreciates it. <laughs> no, just get the stick. Bring the stick back. That's the new meme. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I could come over in the Mazda with a stick. <laughs> Hit you with it. I mean... Oh, my God. Sure, why not? But yeah, um, I really love the Paul Rudd... Um, uh, the fundamentals of caring. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, if we get Paul Rudd, I'd love to get Rob Riggle on here. So I don't know about Rob Riggle. I, I don't know. I like Rob. I don't think I've seen anything that he's you been in. You saw 21 Jump Street. Not all of it. I think I've seen him in, like play a few vague characters i mean he's definitely one of those oh it's that guy but i feel like paul rudd yeah well def- paul yeah i mean yeah he, that's probably the difference paul rudd is poor. when i was him as like a leading man he was the Rob is kind of like the goofy guy in the corner yeah i mean it's pretty cool that a ku alum is an avenger I mean, I I would venture to say that Rob is more serious than Paul. Mm. In just, a different just, sense, um, yeah. Personality and persona. Because he, he always comes off as like super intense. Rob does. Where he's like, no, I get a Patrick Warburton vibe from Rob Riggle, though. Like, Rudd is more like, oh, I'm... I'm kind of laid back. I'm chill. I'm cool. And oh, yeah. that's funny. And whereas, like, Rob Riggle, he's more like, you know, he's more like an intense funny. I don't didn't, know. Didn't Paul Rudd do Our Idiot Brother? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's right. I love that movie. I absolutely love that fucking movie. Like, <clears throat> sorry, for, I had a, <clears throat> for as much as we've shit on Disney and Marvel and stuff, like you have to remove Paul Rudd from that. You really do, because it's like, well, yes, I hate most of all that, but Paul Rudd seems like such a genuine guy that, yeah, I definitely want to like have a conversation with him. It is weird though that you don't like. He doesn't show up to any KU stuff, and Rob Riggle is always there. Yeah, I saw Rob Riggle at KU. That's why I was like, ooh, that'd be cool. I know, but, like, why doesn't Paul Rudd show up? Is it because, like, he and I think so similarly (laughs) about, like, eh, you know, just get my degree and move on with my life? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I don't hate James Earl Jones. Ooh, that's oof, we gotta we gotta fucking whore ourselves to get that far. I think. I will do it. All right, Joe, go make a fucking Patreon and an OnlyFans. <laughs> Joe's lips are still pink. Mine are pale. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me to suck any dick. <laughs> Wait, do I have to show my butthole? <laughs> Only if Batman right. comes out of it. <laughs> to get James Earl Jones on here. We're talking about Mufasa. We're talking about Darth Vader. Come on. 
We're talking about whoever he played in Field of Dreams. <laughs> really? I can't remember his name. What was the name? Uh, it was... Uh, uh, I know it. I know it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Terrence. Terrence, uh... You almost got it. Starts with an M. Yeah? Terrence, uh, I see it. Come on. (laughs) Malik? You guys gotta help me. Well, I'm seeing if you get it first. Isn't there a Terrence Malick? It's Terrence Mann. Oh, you know it. Or did you look it up? No, I looked it up. (laughs) Oh, I was going purely off of memory. Well, you know how long it's been since I've seen that movie? Uh, You were probably still in diapers. (laughs) Well, it was constantly playing at my house because, well, let's face it, my dad has a boner for Kevin Costner, so. Mm. Did you know he was a Delta Chi? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. He does have that look. Yeah, he does have a Delta Chi look. <laughs> I pledged Delta Chi my first tour. And uh, I had to go back for a second tour. <laughs> <laughs> and what's that say about fraternities? Uh, what's that you. say about me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, uh, in the spirit of not letting every episode go for two hours next time, let's wrap this up. <laughs> Okay, well, do we want to count uh, the lineup? You said Sunday, right? Uh, do we? Do we want to count that as an episode? Maybe we can do like two episodes. Of course, this is going to be a short episode. It's probably going to take Stuart ten minutes to cop out. <laughs> probably. I did mm-hmm. not know that sriracha sauce is actually less than tobacco so- tobacco Tabasco sauce. <laughs> oh, Stuart. That. Oh, Stuart. <laughs> He's not going to last long, but no. we yeah, we could probably pound this out in like 20 30 minutes. It's going to be a short episode. We can either post it onto Stuart's YouTube channel or we can do it through the podcast, maybe. I don't know. The logistics. Mm, I think it'd be funny if we could wait until Joe was down. But, yeah, you already have the sauces, and they're going to go bad, so. Yeah, no, it's gonna they're not going to go bad. I, I'm, I'm not opening them yet. But we could also do, like, a FaceTime or a Zoom meeting. Yeah, but then how is Joe going to be able to experience this? Like, he's got to suffer, too. Uh, Joe, 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 Joe. I know, I know. I'm the bastard. Get yeah, your I'm ass to the chopper now! Especially especially because I... <laughs> yeah, I'm five hours away and I work on Sundays, so... Yeah, trip on your grenade, Joe. Joe, Joe, rabbit. <laughs> oh my! God. I was just watching clips of that yesterday. <laughs> Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Hitler. No, yes, we're all just standing around Heil Hitlering. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. It's up to you. If you want to do it, we can. Otherwise, we can postpone it. Hmm. I mean, I may go ahead and do the challenge with with Alex this weekend, but of course, I can always preserve the sauces well, for another date and time for uh, us. If so. he is available, then I'll do it. I guess. 
it takes them like two, one to two minutes to drive here. So he's kind of available whenever I tell him to be available. <laughs> so like I said, you he's guys not, work for this. He actually has a job. So. <laughs> Uh, well, it is almost yeah, 11. Well, maybe so. I'll preview you with the lineup, and, and that'll actually give me time to actually get the the Sean Evans and esque um, spirit of interviewing you while you're doing the wings. Yeah, it's got to be a proper interview too. Yeah. You got to like come up with meaningful questions to ask me, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like I have enough to go off of, but maybe I need to think about it a little bit more. I'm like, what do I want to ask you? Do I want to ask you, are you a virgin? <laughs> who, uh, who do you commune with? I don't know. I was thinking of like stupid questions like that, but we can make it more serious. Uh, I don't know. I don't care. I'm I'm pretty open. So surprise him. Yeah, that's the whole point of the interview, right? Is to just like feed me spicy ass fucking chicken nuggets, and you know what? Go out and buy fucking dinosaur chicken nuggets. That's how they need to do it from here on out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we hold off until Lent? Yeah, I mean, it's preserved until I crack it open, and then okay, after that, so that'll be April. I mean, the the hot sauces don't go bad; they just get worse. <laughs> they like, ferment. Like the bacteria, the 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 fungi and bacteria that would grow in a normal, you know, emulsification of ingredients, just the, even they are like, God damn it, no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, no. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised the fucking glass doesn't, like, melt on the super spicy one. <laughs> well, they put it in, like, non... -re well, glass doesn't react with uh, super spicy. And that's why it's always best to preserve your, your hot sauces in glass. And, and then, of course, if you're making your own, you should always saran wrap the top because plastic does not interact with um, with the spicy either so glass and plastic are pretty good for for preserving hot sauces they're also great for preserving the environment by not breaking down yeah well you can have your hot sauces or you can save the environment either way you're hurting yourself <laughs> Point taken. Oh god. But guess what? If life is not worth living, why live it? As weirdly worded as that is, that's a great philosophy. It is. I mean there's a reason why you should like work towards becoming a certain thing in order to Give yourself the opportunities to actually enjoy your life. But if you can't afford to enjoy your life, then you're not actually living. So. But what if you're trying to live and enjoy your life, but you don't have a job for whatever reason? So you're not getting paid. So you can't enjoy life because life requires money. Okay, existentialism. Well, tell that to all the fucking bums on Mass Street. Good night. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you for calling it there then. Okay. Work towards getting a job so that way you can afford to do the things you want to do. That is the <laughs> to a good life, and I'm still working on that. I'm, I mean, there was times when I had like a decent paying job. And I could have taken risks. Oh, I could have gone to, like, Five Finger Death Punch. Or I could have, you know, flown to the Bahamas for three days. Damn. I could have afforded it. But, of course, I would have been, you know, sacrificing, you know, like, 
a week's worth of booze and table. But, I mean, get your priorities straight. Figure out what you want and then do it. And then everything else be damned. Just, just do that. If you want to live your life traveling the world after the pandemic, of course, you know, drop down to a lower lower cable thing. Do whatever you need to do. Understand, oh, I'm going to live on mac and cheese or ramen for a fucking week. But guess what? I got to go to fucking Tahiti. I got to do this and that and this and that. Great. Yeah. You're going to have to sacrifice to do what you want. But don't be scared to do what you want. Yep. That's one thing I wish I would have done in my 20s that I never did. But I was always scared because it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to... You know, pay for beer on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then I'm not going to be able to have friends over, and I'm not going to be able to, you know, like, order out food and do this, and it's like, you know what? I could have gone to fucking Italy for a week if I would have just saved up a little bit, if I would have nutted up suffered a little bit in order to to travel a little bit more I probably would have been happier but at the same time I wasn't doing it with anybody let's face it I'm not a friendly guy I don't have a lot of friends hey Lois <laughs> except for you tools those tools did you say blues clues I said use twos. Yours, toes. Yours, toes. No, there, there's things I wish I could have done. There's ways that I wish that I could have fulfilled things. You know, been better about things. But guess what? I wasn't willing to sacrifice at the time. Yeah. And guess what? If you want what you want, you're going to have to sacrifice something. That is the way of the world. Mm. That is the way it works. Kind of goes back to my old adage of if you want something done right, do it yourself. Yeah, but guess what? You're going to be lonely doing it. Exactly. So decide what you want. Do you want people to help you? Or do you want it done right? Yeah. Have a clear picture of what you want And then understand what goes into doing that. It's that thing of like, would you rather be extremely wealthy and successful but have absolutely no friends or an idiot surrounded by friends? Or something like that. Being poor surrounded by friends. Yeah, but what exactly is value? Because if you have the right friends, they'll fucking bail you out. (laughs) Well, but also if you're alone, you can always pay for your company, and then your lawyers can bail you out. (laughs) Yeah, but that that probably just makes you even more fucking sad. (laughs) Wow. Either way, it's sad. You can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. It's... That's the world we live in, and that's what people need to accept. And that is my philosophical frosting for this evening your philosophical the, the little nugget that we're pulling from this episode is the fact that you can't have your cake and eat it too you can't be happy and rich I'm sorry did you say philosophical prostate yeah that's what I heard I'm pretty sure you said frosting though I said frosting okay sorry I can't hear I've got I, I, I'm, ears. Our cupcake is baked. I'm putting the frosting on. <laughs> our little nugget of wisdom. I'm not sure I want to eat any cupcake you put frosting on. Because <laughs> I'm pretty worried about what's on that cupcake. 
Joe, Frosted, have frosting. <laughs> have you tried my cooking? Stuart, no. have I steered you wrong? Uh, not yet. And I would never. Until we do the lineup. <laughs> yeah. And that's the only time. That one's for shits and giggles. Mostly burning shits, though. Well, I'm not doing you wrong. You know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you've seen the hottest sauce done. The Apollo. I did it. Alex did it. Alex is also a connoisseur of very fine, spicy sauces. Yeah, but see, you guys enjoy torturing yourselves. I don't. Masochism. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we see. We see. We see about that. We see about that. It's closed. It's very sad. Closed. Open. It's cute. Very happy. Happy. Open. Very sad. Closed. Yes. Means oh. <laughs> okay. No, I'm telling you, the Apollo, it tastes amazing. It's going to be the best hot sauce you ever tasted in your entire goddamn life. Okay, just to give you an example, I did have actually, I had a Taki today, the Blue Heat Taki. Somebody had a bag at work, and I'm just like, those are, like, really weirdly blue. And they're like, you want one? And I'm like, sure, I'll give it a try. And I'm just like, ah! <laughs> yeah, I, well, again, I don't expect you to make it through this challenge. How many bottles do you think I can do? I'm going to be surprised if you get to f six. That's actually generous. <laughs> yeah. Really generous. I'm, I'm putting myself at, like, three. <laughs> well, I think that, like, the first five are really, really generous. Dude, on... I can't do fucking Tabasco sauce. You're gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I will. <laughs> there may be some pressure. I, I want to see you get past five. Okay. <laughs> What's the name of number five? Let me look it up, because I, I'm i not, like, sitting here with my sauces in front of me. Come yeah, but on. you're a diehard fan, and you, like, were dying to get your lineup, so, like, I would have figured you There is a dialogue hiding away from the light, hiding away from my children, <laughs> hiding away from my wife, hiding away from Alex, who is, like, dying to bust into him. So I'm like, no. I'm just putting this way out of sight, out of mind, for now, until uh, Stuart is ready. Well, I'm, I'm ready, but... Spongebob not. is ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Good morning, Mr. Krabs. Oh, good morning to you, Spongebob. <laughs> There's my demo right, reel, so I guess. The first one is Hot Ones, the classic hot sauce made by Hot Ones. The second one, Hot and Saucy Garlic and Pepperoncini Hot Sauce. Mm, that one actually sounds really good. And then there's Mark's Barbados Style Hot Sauce. Lizzie and I spent our honeymoon in Barbados. There ain't nothing spicy about that. That's actually a wonderful place to be. What's the uh, Scoville rating on three? On three... I can look that up because I'm smart and I know how to do research because I'm a scientist, god damn it. Uh, <laughs> Arbato style hot sauce. Oh, we need a merch store so badly. <laughs> Just, I'm a scientist, god damn it. <laughs> is actually done by the heat nest uh, ingredients size god damn it give me a scoville rating 
Five fluid ounces. Three out of ten. The fuck is three, three out of ten? <laughs> I think as far as heat. Let's uh, see if it's on the back of the bottle. Bake well, refrigerate after opening. If it says refrigerate after opening, it's pretty mild. <laughs> Means that it can't fight off the bacteria. <laughs> if it says do not fucking look at this after opening, <laughs> you know it can survive a nuclear blast. No. I'm looking it up. Uh, Scoville rating. Mark's Barbados, 15,500 Scoville. Oh, yeah, I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> what? On 15,000? Yeah. Tabasco's not even 5,000, right? Are you kidding me? Right? Sriracha sauce is like 2,500. Yeah, 2,500. Yeah. So what's Tabasco? Uh, Tabasco is 2,500. Oh, what the fuck is Sriracha? I thought that... Motherfucker! Tabasco is 35,000. Oh, wait. The regular one. There we go. (laughs) But Fucking Stuart, Google. Stuart, honestly, don't, you should not pay attention to the Scovo rating. It's purely subjective. Yeah, it is kind of stupid because I swear that Cholula is hotter. Do you know how the Scovo rating is is yeah, done? Yeah, you told me it's how like... How many like, drops of water takes to extinguish the yeah. heat? So it's like one person's perspective, though, right? Mm-hmm. But you also have to think about time. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I eat a jalapeno over amount of time. This is going to mild out. But how many drops of water over time can I do this? And they're not counting time. They're just counting drops of water. Yeah. It, it's not a solid measurement. The, the solid measurement is, this is mild sauce, this is hot sauce. Okay, scoop of chip in mild sauce, mmm, that's pretty good. It's almost got a sweet taste to it. Scoop of chip in hot sauce, Jesus fucking Christ, that's hot! <laughs> that's gonna be my reaction to, like, probably the second bottle. <laughs> well, on, on the upside, you don't have to do the bomb. The bomb. What if Beyond we started? Infinity. Don't tell me which one's which. Well, that takes away from the game. I mean, Apollo two point five million Scoville. Fuck. I do have a heart condition, by the way. <laughs> I was gonna say he does know that, right? Like, aren't you not supposed to eat? certain spicy things if you have a heart condition (laughs) actually spicy food helps with heart conditions can it also kill you though haven't there been instances of people like actually fucking dying yeah but if it's like if you get a certain tolerance towards spicy food which I have zero tolerance (laughs) Maybe you need to work on that. (laughs) Or I just like to eat what I like to eat. (laughs) Or maybe there's a reason you have a heart condition. Probably. (laughs) Because I like fucking cake and donuts so much. (laughs) Who doesn't? Maybe the only reason I'm still alive is because I'm eating spicy food. And it's good for your heart. That might be it. Well, I don't I don't see how spicy food could correlate with like stopping your heart. 
Granted, I I think that you could like end up throwing up or having you know a Later. certain amount of shock that would end up <laughs> yeah killing you. I'm just like oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, because oh fuck. Of the weight but I mean, if you like slowly expose yourself to spicier and spicier food, it, it's actually like scientifically proven that it's gonna help. With heart health. Hmm. Yeah, but how slow is slow? Like, what you can do. I mean, w once you get to the point that you can eat, like, a whole jalapeno pepper full, that's probably the moderation of healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, start with, like, a centimeter of jalapeno and work your way up, or you can start with, like, a hot sauce, say Louisiana, and once you get used to like eating Louisiana on a regular basis, you can work your way up to like a habanero hot sauce. I think I or... could eat a whole jalapeno pepper because I kind of already do with nachos, <laughs> and like I'll actually pick out. I know what I just said, but like I'll actually pick out the jalapenos and like eat them not on a chip. I'm telling you, if you can handle a jalapeno without, like, crying, you're going to be fine for this challenge. All right. <laughs> Let's just see how much you can judge I, me I, afterwards. I mean, men. <laughs> I mean, not weaker men do this challenge, but... I mean, I'm a guy who, like, grows habaneros and he eats them all. And, and accidentally like, scratches your uh, eye with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. I mean, it hurts. <laughs> but I learned how to tolerate the pain. And I think that's what this comes down to. It's a pain thing. And if you can overcome this pain, it it's going to be a revelation. It's going to be... <laughs> self-discovery in 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 not a cult way but just like for your own benefit well we shall see and if he can't do it we're gonna make a great vid <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm going to have some really fucking weird commentary, probably. It's probably best if you don't have your kids around. <laughs> no, it's okay if you're around. I mean, they, they've they seen this before. They've done this before. I mean, look look at Alex. Him and I, we, we actually tried the Apollo. And actually, oh, I'm thinking about using the old Apollo. Because it turns out, like, if you let it sit... Oh god. For like two. It gets way hotter. How the fuck does that work? Because it it oxygenates. It has a nuclear fucking meltdown is what it sounds like. <laughs> no, it, it it oxygenates and therefore has like more of a chemical reaction which opens up the cap in, and allows it to like actually be exposed. <laughs> where it, I don't know, maybe with you we'll use the no Apollo. Because it's a lot milder. Well, just add it to the lineup then. Because if it's if it's even spicier than itself, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean the way that we set it up, we didn't even use the bomb. Because beyond or the bomb beyond insanity, you can't buy from the heatness. That's Purely, uh, it has uh, the capsaicin extract, whereas the heatness just purely deals with uh, pure chili pepper hot sauces. No extracts, no chemical preservatives, no nothing. So it's purely organic, purely, you know, from the earth. Whereas beyond or uh, da bomb beyond insanity, which is where everybody loses their shit, 
Alex actually has it, and they're produced in uh, Kansas City. But, oh my god, wow. Yeah, but what happens is, is it's purely liquid form, and it has a metallic flavor. And when you eat it, I think because of the fact that it's not a chili paste... Or so it's chili. blood. It's just the coughed up blood from everyone who's ever tried it before. You just said it has a metallic flavor. That's basically blood. It's just the, the fucking no, tears I, that people I bled that, out of their eyes. <laughs> I think that's just the capsaicin extract. But what happens is, is that it's more liquidy, and therefore it covers more surface area on your tongue, therefore interacting more, creating more of a burn. If because I can't it, feel my asshole, I'm taking you to court. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say if you can't feel your asshole, you're taking him to court? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh... have you sign a, a waiver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you do get a heart attack or if there is a medical issue, then yeah, <laughs> I, I'm i willing to cover that. I'm willing to be liable <laughs> for your problems, not as an associate, but as a friend, because that's <laughs> what friends do. If your ass is numb, you <laughs> Then I will counter sue you for being a douchebag. <laughs> Wait, okay, I have to ask. <laughs> Medically, can it be proven if he can't feel his asshole, like objectively? <laughs> Secondly, can you prove legally that he is a douchebag? <laughs> Well, first off... Why am I even talking? <laughs> I can prove that he will recover from the numb asshole. Because <laughs> I have done that repeatedly, repeatedly. I feel like my customers are numb assholes. So yeah, I recover from numb asshole-itis quite frequently. Oh, that's nice. And I will use that in the court of law. <laughs> the second thing... I mean, yeah, if something bad happens to Stuart, I'm willing to pay for it. I'm willing to help him out. I'm I'm going to feel bad. I'm, <laughs> I'm there as a friend. There's no reason to sue me over doing something that you agreed to do. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I have recorded conversations of you agreeing to do this. And yes. I've explained to you the implications of doing this. You have no case. Do you have recorded conversations? Can you point out which episodes they are? Because you don't fucking listen to this, apparently. <laughs> what number is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's 26. <laughs> okay, so episode 26. <laughs> Joe, help me out if I forget. <laughs> Uh, you're asking the wrong person for help. <laughs> so anyway. At this point, I'm kind of wondering, what the fuck is that iguana doing on my table? Okay, so I'm not going to push you to do anything you don't want to do. The lineup's there. If you want to do it, I mean, I. you did say I do have recorded evidence in our telegram where you're like, I'm totally going to do that. I want to do that. Harder daddy, I want it. <laughs> and this is me telling you <laughs> that, like, the worst part of it is not even a part of it. But I can't even tell you what the worst part is because I haven't done this lineup. <laughs> But I'm about to do this lineup this weekend. You can be a part of it or no. You can wait a little bit. No. If, if you're going to experience it for the first time, I'm going to be there then. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll fucking. I don't think you will. I'll, well, I'll at least get to bottle number three. I'll, I'll make that my 
my challenge is to get to the let, third one. Let me tell you, I've never expected you to make it to bottle 10. <laughs> I, I I love you to death, son, but you're, you're never going to make it. In the in the spicy game. Yeah, but at first you said six, then five, and now ten. So you're kind of like giving me hopes. <laughs> well, you're not doing Apollo. <laughs> what if I what if I just started I with that and went backwards? French bottle, and it's not so spicy. But I don't know. Uh, why don't we wait until after Lent? That's probably a better idea, so we could have Alex. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm still definitely opening them up this weekend, and you should stop by. I mean, we we can do like a taste test, kind of get an idea. Of... No, no, because because you gotta have the raw reaction to it. Okay. Well, you don't have to taste test. How about that? Because I was talking about how you should come over sometime this weekend. Oh, well, and, yeah. Well, tomorrow, I, I, I'm i planning on doing like a couple hours. I got to figure out how to do like uh, an alternate splice visualization and par tech. And that'll probably take me like an hour or two. But after that, I'm thinking about cooking something pretty good. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but... I got a couple of brats and a bunch of, like, just random other shit. I've been, like, panic buying when I go shopping now because gas prices are just fucking through the roof. And so I just go for, like, all the fuel saver stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You invest in stocks. My parents invest in oil. <sighs> well, you can invest in oil stocks as well. So. Yeah, I know. I don't. I don't make enough to invest in anything right now. I invested in my in education. <laughs> there you go. That's there a pretty good go. investment. I mean, do you have five thousand dollars that's just sitting around? Not yet. I'm waiting for that uh, Biden money. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you have five thousand dollars just sitting around? Well, stick it in the stock market. You could lose it all. <laughs> and uh, stick my it up your ass. ass set fire to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll get about the same from my tax return as I will from the Biden money. So, damn, that's pretty good. Yeah, ten thousand dollars in the pocket. I'm planning on making a Cajun microwave. I kind of want to be there just to film it all. And then we could just, like, put that up. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could do that. Just to do, like, I mean, a time lapse. It doesn't have to be a part of the podcast. That could just be a Stuart production. Cajun microwave. Documentary. <laughs> My friends make a Cajun microwave. Following uh, Justin Wilson's outline and online videos. I feel like uh, we we should probably branch out and create like a film dudes channel just for like all the weird extra bits and stuff. I think I need to lose weight before that happens. I want to be sex icon. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one day we will have face cams. I mean, everyone knows what I look like because I've had my ugly mug on this channel for at least a couple of years now. And also, everybody knows what a Stuart looks like. Ah. What? <laughs> what? It's 11.30 almost. I'm, like, tired yep. and confused now. <laughs> You're abused. You're tired and abused. Sure. How have we let this fucking mess run an hour and 48 minutes I... over? <laughs> I don't know. You have control. Sorry, it's my fault. <laughs> I, I've gotten used to the idea of starting a meeting and then making it prolong for hours <laughs> in order to get things done. <laughs> and that's back to the original rant that I ran where it's like <laughs> just trying to get as much done as possible at one time 
This is actually our longest episode yet. It's longer than the last one. Yeah. yeah well, I don't know. I've been in like two or three meetings that are longer than this today. Jesus. So, I mean, oh, my entire day has been sitting in front of the computer talking. That's not good for your eyeballs. Yeah, well, I don't have to look at the computer right now, do I? <laughs> uh, I don't know, Joe. Post some porn on Discord. <laughs> Okay, what are you looking for? <laughs> no, I'll just pull up my my incognito and rub <laughs> one out on the next vid <laughs> if I need to. <laughs> oh god, Jesus Christ. But like I said, with the with the fucking week I've had, I'm not shooting my putty towards the moon tonight. <laughs> oh, god. oh god. I just do. <laughs> Not in you, Stu, but just sit and just stew about my fucking week. <laughs> Take a little bit of time. Oh, God. <laughs> well, my 38th this, this attempt is... to wrap this up. Let's see if it works. Please do. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Before this train goes any further through the earth and out the other side and into space. If anything, yeah, it's the fucking drill from that one movie where they have really awful CGI graphics to convey digging through the earth's core. (laughs) Anyways. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, this has been a shit show. I mean, film dudes, and we'll see you all next week. Ow. (laughs) (laughs) What? Bye.